entrepreneurship development cell, EDC, started its journey with the aim to inculcate the spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship amongst the young students of this institute to encourage startup creation through guidance, mentorship, and support. Now let's take a look at a few of the activities that EDCell has performed throughout the years. This is a workshop that is based on storytelling by innovators with the hopes of inculcating values of entrepreneurship and design thinking in the students and motivating them to start ventures of their own. Innovators and entrepreneurs at campus for motivating students through sharing their journey towards innovation and entrepreneurship. NSCC Entrepreneurship Development Cell, in collaboration with Vadwani Foundation, offers the foundation and advanced level of entrepreneurship course for NSCC students. This is from the time when Netai Shubhash Engineering College's EDC organized a product design and design thinking workshop at campus to make aware of the students of what design thinking actually is. This is from the time when Netai Shubhash Engineering College's EDC and IIC celebrated Innovation Day with an invited talk from esteemed guests. The NSCC Entrepreneurship Development Cell organizes the International Hull Prize on-campus event every year between December and February since 2018, where students come up with their ideas related to a specific global challenge shouted by the Hull Prize International Committee at USA. The NSCC Institutions Innovation Council and NSCC EDC jointly organize the Idea to Prototype competition every year where students of NSCC showcase their prototype. The team that you can see from EDC had prepared a prototype of a drone and was selected and invited to CII's Eastern India Conference at ITC Shonar Bangla. Every year, NSCC organizes an internal hackathon to select prototypes to be presented in Smart India Hackathon, which is organized by AICTE. These are a few students of NSCC who are associated with the EDC that regularly are participating in different business plan competitions organized by other institutes. This is how we maintain a very close and very progressive relationship with other entrepreneurship clubs from different colleges. Let's take a look at a few of the achievements that students associated with IIC and EDC have achieved in the past years. This is from the time when a team from NSEC EDC got the first prize in the 31st Industrial India Trade Fair of 2018. This is from the time when we won the first prize in 3M CII Young Innovators Challenge Award. This is the team, Water from Thin Air, who secured runners-up in the Smart India Hackathon of 2019. This is Team Half Fights, who were awarded the first rank in the energy subcategory of how to enhance the income of a village of Chhatra Vishwakarma Awards 2019. This is Team Energy Saver, winner of National Innovation Contest 2020, organized by AICTE and received 2 lakhs in funding to incubate the idea. This is Team Iris, the team that won the Toycathon Physical Edition 2021 to 2022. These are students from NSCC EDC who went to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia to represent NSCC globally and to participate in the Hult Prize Regional Finals. This is a fellow student who built a solar toto with 60,000 funding from the college. This is the 34th conference of BNCCI. These are a few of the certifications that the Institutions Innovation Council of NSCC, along with NSCC's ED cell, received during its active years in this institution. Students of NSCC filed many patent applications during the last three years with the faculty members of NSCC. Now let's take a look at a few of the entrepreneurs that NSCC has produced over the years. This is Shankit Shorkar, the founder of Team Cognito, which is a next-gen IT company with an edge in cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. This is our alumni, Orgho Komul Acharji, from the department of AEI. This is Pratik Dash, our alumni, from the BME department. This is Rupak Paul, our alumni, from the BME department. This is Amar Kumar Sahi, our alumni, from the BME department. This is Abadur Rahman Siddiqui, our alumni, from the BME department. This is Ankur from our current fourth year CIC department. Now I would like to take this opportunity to wish a vote of thanks to all the students who have participated in NSCC, EDCs and IICs events to bring IIC and EDC to this place and position and we hope to see much bigger and much innovative ventures in the future. Well, this e-summit of course, promises to bring out more firebrand ideas from students and the name aptfully given, Inferno.
a name that was also prescribed by the students. A big round of applause for that, please. Beautiful name. I would request uh, now the director of Nezaji Shubash Engineering College, Dr. Rishikut Mondal, to please come up on stage and offer the welcome address, sir. Good morning. Welcome to all of you, including our beloved students, our respected teachers, respected guests, and academicians, our especially one of the founder members, Mr. T.K. Ghosh, who is present over here, our GCO, Dr. Shonku Bosch, he is very much present. I welcome them. I am very much glad to welcome you, sir, our respected principals, our distinguished guests. I am not very much acquainted, but during two, three days, I have been acquainted with their personalities. That is, Mr. What is number? Just now, he is a very renowned fellow, and I have heard his name, and his presence certainly will enlighten us. I should say, it is the continuations of our Silver Jubilee celebrations, because Nitesh Washington College is going to complete 25 years of his academic journey, excellent academic journey. And this is the not first step, it is the second step of, to reach the final goal. And certainly, they will score the goal with high marks. I am expecting from the students as well as from my beloved colleagues. With the joint hands, I will reach our destinations to the epitome of success. And I expect it from them. I congratulate all my students who are present over there and who are not in this uh, room or in this platform, but I, con I extend my congratulation, congratulations to all the students who is very much entangled with this program and always trying to enlist them with the different uh, new ethics of engineering field, I congratulate them and I welcome again. And uh, I extend my thanks and gratitude and loves for their future success. Institutions, this program is the joint venture of two bodies, institutions, innovation councils, and another bodies, our uh, entrepreneurship's double and cell. It is joint ventures of our institutions, and the students are deeply engaged. And this is not the first functions. Our another cells, another body of the students cell, they perform different functions of entrepreneurship and uh, stuck up. And they have shown their own ability for every step of their success. And I'm expecting something from the new from them. Since 2002, we have produced a thousand and thousands of students those who are across the, not our country, across the world, and they're holding the highest post of the organizations when they come over here. And a little part of our ex-students are already described by the 
uh, our speaker and already you have heard uh, some activities uh, performed by them. Whenever they come, I feel proud when they meet me. The students of 2002 passed out. You just imagine about uh, how many years back when they come and see, then Amar Bukta Purejai, Shoti, Unishwa, Pane, 1998 e tara I used to request them you please whenever you come to the country you meet me and i want your expressions and extend your help and uh, your মানে তোমাদের সঙ্গ এবং তোমাদের ছত্র ছায়া আমাদের যেন আগামী ফিউচার স্টুডেন্টস দে উইল গো আপ এন্ড দে উইল বি ইনলাইটেন ইন দ্য ফিল্ড ইন দ্য ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং ফিল্ড অফ দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড এন্ড সামটাইমস দে কেপ দেয়ার ওয়ার্ল্ড এন্ড স্টেপ বাই স্টেপ হোয়েন এভার দে কাম আপ টু দে কাম এন্ড বিট মি but personally i am not very much focused to all of them i am little bit conservative and whatever it may be i have come i was forced to come over and to say something on the stage that's why i extend my thanks and gratitude and love to all my beloved students and also respected teachers who are, who are present over the year and the guests who are present over the year i am very much happy that our Dr. Shonko Bosch, he, he was and still he is one of the nice entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs and when he will speak, certainly you should know something from him. He is a giant personality in the field of industry who is present over here and not only giant in figure, in giant in knowledge in the field of industrial world and I expect something from them and some of the dignitaries who are present over here, I am expecting something from the new field of our journey. So gradually you will be enlightened with their associations and with this world I am concluding, extending my congratulations and welcoming you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for those encouraging words <laughs> and it is always a delight listening to you. Why first? Yes, we always force you to come up on stage and give an address because we love listening to you, sir. Your experience is what enriches us. Um, uh, I would also now request uh, the principal of NSEC, Professor Dr. Omul K. Ghosh, to offer his address and set the note for today, sir. Very good morning. Respected dignitaries on the dais and of the dais, our honorable ED sir and group CEO, Dr. Shunku Bosch, our respected director sir, Dr. Rishikesh Mondol, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Sister Nivedita University, Professor Dr. Anupam Basu, dignitaries and respected guests from the industries, ladies and gentlemen, my colleagues and guests from our head office, Techno India Group, 
registered and dean of our college respected hod's faculties and staff members of our college members of our netaji subhash engineering college entrepreneurship development cell and the members of our institutions innovation council and my beloved students first of all i welcome you all to netaji subhash engineering college we are happy to announce that netaji subhash engineering college entrepreneurship development cell and the institutions innovation council organizing inferno the business fest from 10th to 12th january 2023 at our college premises and this year netaji subhash engineering college is also celebrating its 25th years of glorious journey in academic excellence on this occasion we would like to cordially invite you to make the event a grand success inferno undertakes several captivating and alarming events across the span of 3 days the program schedule mainly includes multiple panel discussions with eminent entrepreneurs from different sectors of the industry e summit the closed room business plan pitching with established investors exciting contest debate boardroom pitching b plan competition keynote speeches with industry veterans and rising stars and celebrity guest appearance is also included in this program a chance to interact with some of the finest entrepreneurs investors and innovators from across the nation and inter college student innovators open discussion program is also included in this to get inspired by young minds and their success stories all of you are well aware that netaji subhash engineering college is one of the pioneering engineering college in the eastern zone of our country which is situated situated in west bengal it started its journey in the year 1998 as one of the first self finance engineering college in the state of west bengal already i have mentioned that this year we are observing its 25th years of journey as a special year at science city auditorium on 28th of june 2022 we felicitate it in the presence of special dignitaries including the then chairman of aict professor onil sastro bude our managing director said mr shottam rai choudhury honorable vc of markout dr shoykat maitro honorable ministers of west bengals holding different portfolios and other academicians in the state this college was funded with the world bank project take up in the year 2005 this college is having nba accreditation accreditation since 2004 we also continuing the nac accreditation this college was also entered into the nirf ranking in the year 2020 secured position in area in 2020 and 21 all india ranking iic of our institute received five star status from innovation cell of ministry of education government of india in the year 2020 it was also selected as host institute business incubation center by msme 
Government of India. Our institute also selected as mentor institute by incubation cell of MHRD and Ministry of Education, Government of India in the year 2021. I am happy to announce that in this year 2020, 20, 2023, our college has been selected as one of the NAC mentor institute in West Bengal by the Directorate of Technical Education, Government of West Bengal. Very recently, we have received it. Our college started its journey with 240 students in the year 1998, and presently, this number exceeds 4,000. Presently, our password students are not limited within the country, but they are spread it over the globe in different fields and in different responsible positions. Not only in industry, but also in academics. It is very much relevant and important to mention here that some of our students who started their startups and those are also running successfully. Our institute's innovation cell, NSCC, IIC, and entrepreneurship development cell, EDC, NSCC, EDC, are running smoothly by joining hands. And as a result, our achievement in the state and national levels are also remarkable. We feel proud for that. In this context, I want to congratulate our team, Team Batch, and team power con technology from our college for winning the IITF best startup award in the category of future entrepreneur and project of the year respectively on 30th December 2022. Among three startup participation, we secured two winning prizes among three possible categories at IITF organized by BNCCI. Again, I want to mention here that Devlena Chattopadhyay, a third year student, and Obhijit Dash, a pass out student of our college, have jointly represented the college as team IRIS and backed the title as track to winners in national level grand finale, grand finale prototype design competition, Taikathon physical edition 2021 and 22, organized by AICT and Ministry of Education Innovation Cell in the month of May 2022. Innovation of anything is always encouraging. And the entrepreneurship is the real factor of employment. Entrepreneurs are really dreamers, not only for themselves, but also for the others. So. Entrepreneurship should always be given the priority. Innovation and entrepreneurship as career opportunity is the most important in the present scenario. And we hope our program Inferno, the business based, will enlighten and encourage the new entrepreneurs towards success of their dreams. We are eagerly waiting for listening from our distinguished speakers, the leaders in these areas. Hence, I want to conclude here. I again welcome you all to this August gathering at APC Hall of Netaji Shubhash Engineering College. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ghosh, for charting that uh, entire journey for Inferno and the innovation cell and the entrepreneurship development cell. Thank you so much. Well, um, students have a request. So 
they would like to it is you know the other way around but this time students would like to felicitate their tkg sir and their group ceo sir today and i would request the director and the principal to just help them after all this is a event by the student for the students of the students i would request tkg sir and group ceo to please come up on stage because they would like to take this opportunity this was a special request by from the students i would also request our director sir and uh, principal of NSCC to please come up on stage. So they've been standing. Okay, okay. I would also <laughs> request. So he has a special thing to say. Okay, I would also request. Uh, uh, kindly uh, switch off the projector because it's inflecting. Professor Onupam Basu, of course, he's the former director of NIT and at present the pro vice chancellor of Sister Nivedita University. A big round of applause for sir, please. And we are so glad that he's here with us. He's, of course, also the teacher and mentor of our group CEO, sorry if I'm not much wrong. So, <laughs> yes, there is a generation of uh, uh, mentors and teachers already here with us. Uh, students, um, kindly felicitate uh, TKG sir, group CEO sir, and uh, uh, Professor Basu. Come, come, come. Sorry. Now, uh, And if you to see this one, this will be a picture perfect moment. A token of appreciation for our very own TKG sir. Come up students, you've requested this. Come up, come up, come up, come up. Would you like to say something? Tiki sir, apni kicho bol ben. But the students have prepared Uttoryo, of course, a memento, flowers, and a pot.
I would request our group CEO, Professor Dr. Bose, who's of course an inspiration for our students. He has been in the US for a long time. He's a um, you know son of the soul of, of our Bengal itself, but he's made it big. Uh, abroad and he truly knows what it is to innovate and he's as MD sir called him the game changer for 2022. <laughs> so a big round of applause first how we would like to hear from you. Good morning. Uh, Good morning, my respected dignitaries and the guests. And it is really a privilege to be in the presence when I was on my PhD, doing my PhD, and having Professor Anupam Basu, I was in IIT Delhi, and he just probably started his career in IIT Kharagpur. He came into IIT Delhi, and still I remember, and I love that course, the assembly language programming and microprocessor. It's taught by Professor Basu, so I have a special like respect for him so he is my senior he's my mentor and what we are today so teachers are always guru you know that so that's why my first respect to him and the respected other dignitaries professor uh, dr ghosh tk ghosh professor amal ghosh dr mondol and the other respected dignitaries so and good morning all my young students i know that uh, I'm not that well prepared today, but that's what I'm supposed to speak and all those things. But this thing, something other like the entrepreneurship and all, it is close to my heart, but I never done a business. But I feel proud that I did consult to the Fortune 100 companies, to Fortune 10 companies, to Fortune 500 companies across the globe. So whenever I think myself that this is an really opportunity because I left my engineering career in back in 96. After that, all I did as a strategy management consulting started with the Pricewaterhouse US in the management consulting division. So worked for all the companies. So there is an enormous learning for me and traveled around the globe and see the, the, how the business works and all those things. So that was an experience and some of the things that I would like to share. But today's a special event of the Netaji Shubhas is the 25 years of the journey. And the journey who started, they are the real heroes today. They are the real heroes because they created an employment today somehow. So whenever I sign the salary check, I see that how many crores of salary I sign and how many people. So I did work for somebody, but I never built up this empire, but he built up, he and all. So indirectly now today in a Techno India group, directly and indirectly connected to almost 12,000 employee and 12,000 multiply by four. So that means the Techno India group is responsible for providing the bread and butter for 48,000 people. And that is, that is the responsibility that I have taken. So it is, it is a challenging job. But since I'm a pro, I'm used to, so I don't lose my sleep. I still, at the age of 60, I don't take a sleeping pill. So when I go to bed, I sleep fully because I know how to switch on, switch off very well. And every position, everything comes with a package. It looks that I'm a group CEO and all those things, but it comes with a baggage. So there's a lot of things need to compromise, a lot of things need to sacrifice. But I still have a special request. It's not that Shottam Rai Choudhury is my friend, okay? But I have a special request as a friend. I always call him Dada and all those things. But they have just think about that the first private engineering college started by them. It requires a vision. First private university in the state started by them. Now the first sports university in the state is going to start by them. This requires a vision. So that's why they deserve a special applause. And I really proud to be the part of this group and really proud to be the part of this Netaji Shubha, this August event. And recently I was traveling myself with our honorable MD, Mr. Rai Choudhury in UK. 
So he traveled to the various places, Manchester, UK and all. So he met our Netaji Shwas alumni. Oh, that was an awesome experience, what I can tell you that. Some of them are a vice president, some of them are a president, some of them left their career and started their own entrepreneurship in United Kingdom. That's a big experience. That time it gives me, oh my God. So I'm in a different job. The consulting is a different job, but this is a different job. And every day, today is almost time I completed the three years. Every day I enjoy working with the Techno India Group. So, and when I look at the Nidhaji Shivas College, that what they have done, that is a real experience. Then back in July, I was in Las Vegas in a North American Bengali conference, again met quite a few of Nidhaji Shivas Engineering College. And many of them become American citizens now. Many of them are a green card holder. Many of them have started their own business. So that is an awesome experience. So now, as Dr. Mundal said that when he met his uh, 2002 student, he's given a separate pleasure. So that cannot really compensate by money or anything. That is something in a different place, comes from the heart. So that is a good thing. So all the young mind and the bright people are here. Every moment you feel that you are a part of this institute and feel proud of that, that your senior has done a remarkable job. In fact, my own nephew, my younger sister, nephew, passed out of this college. He also quit. Uh, he wasn't quite successful in the software industry, but he quit. He moved to a bank. Now he is one of the senior most officers in State Bank of India. He passed out of this college. And now just he recently got transferred to Kolkata, and he's heading one of the big industrial branch in State Bank of India. <laughs> so that lot of things that you keep on bragging and bragging and bragging, and that's, so that's why there. Now there's a, the institute expects, the college expects, that's our, that all of you are sitting that you built the new journey. You know that the entrepreneurship or providing or creating a job for this is a fundamental founding block of the society. So it's not that you, you all of you can get in a job, you know that these days the jobs are so attractive, the people are getting 32 lakhs job, 44 lakhs job, and out of this college only. And just think about that. But forget about that job, if you can create a job for 10 other people or 20 other people or 100 other people, that's the real achievement. And I personally believe you all have a potential to that. So towards, to the extension of this innovation council and entrepreneurship, you know that you start dreaming big and there's a possibility that there are a lot of investors are ready to invest in your thing. I was a principal investigator, principal evaluator or the IN fund. Have you heard about the IN, Indian Angel Network? You know the, the the, there's a process of funding. First is the crowdfunding. The crowdfunding basically comes from your family and friends there. But the immediately of the crowdfunding, there's an angel funding. And people are really craving for. That there the people are really craving for where to invest. So that means if you have an idea, don't think that you need a money. All you need an idea, idea, and idea. If you have an idea that you can sell your idea is easily. There are, in India now, there are too many angel investment funds are available. So, and that starts the minimum criteria of angel investment is as little as a 50 lakhs and as high as go of a 100 crore. So there are separate process, you know that those who are in entrepreneurship and innovation, you know that how to apply and how to, there is a standard format and all those things. But that's a start thinking that what are the innovation that in any field, it's not an IT, it's not only the green technology, it's not on the environment or biomedical, but every field, if you have a brilliant idea, the investors are ready. In fact, within the group, the Techno India group, if you have an invest idea, bring it to me, my office. You present it, if I'm convinced, obviously before I invest in a five lakh rupees, I will ask a 20 other question that why and how and all. So you will have a difficult to answer. But once you successfully answer and all those things, we don't mind in investing. And that could be any tune of money.
so you really do not have to go outside the group. Within the group, we are ready to invest on any kind of innovation on entrepreneurship development. So wish you all good luck. And Inferno is a beautiful name and a nice name. So it should ignite. Think dream and think impossible. Impossible itself is a possible, you know that I am possible. So there's a nothing called impossible. Everything is possible. And if you don't think it is impossible, then you won't be able to achieve. So I'm sure that some brilliant idea, brilliant entrepreneur will come out of this room. Thank you again. Wish you all good luck. Thanks. Absolutely, sir. Nothing is impossible. What a wonderful message for our students. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we're extremely lucky, fortunate to have with us someone, an academician of ACT Excellence at PAR, Professor Dr. Anubam Basu. Of course, uh, he is a renowned academician and to people in the technology field, he needs no introduction. We will have the keynote address by him to give you a background of the immense you know, uh, work that he's done. He's recently completed his uh, tenure as the director of National Institute of Technology, Durgapur, has been a professor of computer science and engineering at IIT, Kharagpur. He's an active researcher in the areas of cognitive and intelligence systems, embedded systems, and language processing. He has led a number of development projects for technology-enabled education, including school education and education for those with physical disabilities, uh, and a leading NLP researcher has developed several tools and systems for processing of Indian language, especially Bangla, uh, through computers. He's also taught at the University of California at Irvine, University of Durban, Germany, and the University of Ontario, Canada. He has a list of publications, list of awards, and it is endless, of course. He is an Alexander Wald, um, Humboldt Fellow, Fellow of the Indian National Academy of Engineering, Fellow of Society for Data Sciences, Fellow of Asia-Pacific Association for Artificial Intelligence, and a Fellow of the West Bengal Academy of Science and Technology. The awards won by him include State Award for the Best Contribution to the Cause of Empowerment of the Disabled, MPA HASIS, Universal Design Award 2001, 2011 for Contributions in Design for the Disabled, by National Council for Promotion of Employment of Disabled Persons India, the National Award for the Best Technology Innovation for the Physically Disabled, and the Da Vinci Award 2004 from the Multiple Sclerosis Society of Michigan for the Best Technological Innovation for the Physically Challenged. Apart from that, he has special knack for the arts and the literature. One of his major, major achievements is setting up the Society for Natural Language Technology Research, an organization which, among other things, have digitized this is really an innovation. Digitized the entire Robindra Rachanaboli, all formats, in Unicode format, along with the Shorolupi of the songs. And we all know, because I know a little bit more, I know a little bit more, I will have to say, he's, he's also a wonderful poet. <laughs> the big round of applause for sir. We are extremely lucky. What, who better than to set the keynote address for our event today for someone who's mentored several, several students to become entrepreneurs themselves, entrepreneurs in fact, and one of them is of course our Dr. Bose, our very own Dr. Bose. So, sir, over to you. Thank you, Indila, and uh, good afternoon or good morning, what is it now? Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I'm really happy uh, to have been invited uh, to present the keynote address. But when I came here, and I, I'm from Durgapur also I knew the achievements of Netaji Shubhash Engineering College in the field of innovation. So when the lock is already unlocked, you don't really need another key. Therefore, the keynote will be really short. All right? And that will be even shorter 
because uh, from my research of cognitive science, I know that the attention span of the students is at best 20 minutes, right? Beyond that, the teachers will go on teaching, but the students put the switch off. So therefore, I won't uh, uh, make a long speech at all. And I also wrote to the organizers that I'll be speaking for 15 minutes or so at best. And after that, what I'd prefer is an interaction with the students. Now, I can see a lot of students uh, sitting at the back. Um, how many of you are innovators? Can you please raise your hands? No hands are raised, but I could see that there are, uh, I could see that there are a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and uh, the most striking feature is that there are quite a few startups, if I'm not wrong, that have germinated from this college, right? And that's a big thing that uh, all of you can be really proud um, for that and proud for your college. And uh, that should lead you also to be innovators and entrepreneurs. Now, there is a little bit of difference between innovations and entrepreneurship. Uh, entrepreneurship, as uh, Shonku was saying, that it requires some funding, it requires an ecosystem, um, and I, I think, as far as I know, you have got a tinkering lab, do you? Do you have a tinkering lab in this college? Not yet, right? Okay, so uh, the college should have a tinkering lab uh, where the students can just go and play and destroy the things. Not breaking the things, but say, for example, you try to power on any electronic student here? Electronics? Yeah, so suppose you want to uh, connect an operational amplifier. The first thing that happened in my life was 741 was an operational amplifier, and the entire thing went boom because of wrong connection. It got burnt. And we were very scared, but our teacher from Jadapur University came and said, you should burn a few more. Uh, until you burn a few more, you will not learn how to connect and why. But you have to also find out why uh, the op amp got burnt. So that sort of courage you must all have. And I'm sure you can, uh, if you have a tinkering lab, I'll request the director and the principal to arrange for a tinkering lab where the students can walk in and try to give shape to their ideas. Now, when we talk of, so entrepreneurship has got some more constraints. And, um, but before that, I'll restrict myself to innovations. All of us have got an innovator in us. Only thing is, I used to tell a story um, about innovation. A child was really very cranky and uh, was not listening to anything, uh, was shouting. His mother was not being able to handle him. So what he did, what she did, is to take him to the basement. And in the basement, there were a lot of, there were a lot of, uh, what should I say, broken toys and things that were dumped over there. And she encouraged the boy to take some of those and then she asked Michael, the name of the boy was Michael, Michael, what do you see? Michael said, nothing, these are broken pieces. Then she again said, look, Michael, Michael, what do you see? Again, the boy was annoyed and said, that all these are garbage, broken pieces. The mother again said after a while, Michael, what do you see? And this time, since mother was repeatedly asking him to see, Michael looked over there and could see a, sheep of a, a shape of a ship. And uh, as if a human being is there. And he said, Ma, there is a pirate. So the story is, and the mother said, OK, now you can see the pirate. So please make that pirate visible. So the boy started working with that garbage things and gave a shape to a pirate. So the moral of the story is, the root of innovation is in observation. From very common things, you can see 
some gaps. And I'd encourage all the engineers, I'm not talking of innovators only, innovator is there within you, all the engineers to observe and look at the gaps. If I go back to the medieval or ancient India, can you believe what was the, or even in civilization, what is the first innovation in civilization? For civilization, because it is said that civilization developed with the development of towns, and the towns were developed when there was surplus in agriculture. Okay? So in agriculture, what was the first innovation or very important innovation? Ox or bullocks. You know, they were not made by themselves. The technology of castrating them and getting some bullocks and oxes were inventions of human beings. And in India, the oxes had a hump. And that hump was very useful in connecting plows. This I learned just the other day from listening to a lecture from Irfan Habib. And the plows were also inventions first in China and then it came to India. But Indian oxes with those hums could be innovatively used for agriculture and that was another innovation. So innovations come in different form. Cotton was another innovation in India. How the, the cotton was invented, first, now we get the cotton all from Latin America, but the basic cotton, but the invention of India was how to split that cotton and make a machine which will have the cotton shell on the other side and the cotton on the other side, so that it's automatically sorted. That was made in India by a very simple mechanism. If you go to the internet, you will find that that a lady can just pull two strips and split the cotton seed and make it fall on two sides. These were small, small, small innovations that people needed for their own livelihood and from there the civilization really grew. So innovations are everywhere, not necessarily innovations have to be high-end innovations. Innovations also need not be always technological. There are innovations in management. There are innovations in pedagogy. How do I teach in a class? When I find that the students are getting really bored and not listening to a particular subject, are not very interested in that, how do I innovate so that we can make the students attracted towards that? How do you, now I'm giving you some uh, real problems. How do you, how do you uh, get the attention of your girlfriend? You innovate all the time, right? Sitting at the back, yeah. <laughs> so, forget it. So, uh, that's also innovation and we do it all the time. So innovation is a part and parcel of a life. And what I want to say is innovation is always not high-tech, it can be low-tech as well. What is innovation? When do we need innovation? Whenever we find that there is no solution to a problem, or there is an in inadequate solution, uh, or a very important thing you should keep in mind, there is a solution, but that solution is available to a very few who can afford that solution. So your innovation will be, how can I make it affordable? This is, I'll, at the end, I'll give you some examples and I'll give you some challenges and some offers. How can you make it affordable to the teeming millions of our country? Many, uh, say for example, Alexa you make, right? All of you know Alexa? Now, 
how can you make alexa work in a Bang bangla dialect or even a bangal dialect can alexa work can i make it work in our indian scenario now if you can do that if you can the technology is known of speech recognition it is known if you can do that innovation that's an incremental change of a tremendous value it is also a process that we innovate and we make such a process by which we can save money we can have more productivity we can have economic edge which the indian industry really needs there are different types of innovation like sustaining innovation sustaining innovation it looks like an oxymoron right that uh, if it is sustaining then what is innovation that is incremental innovation for but that has got a tremendous value a typical example is the different models of the phone that come to the market you see the if the technology is the same mobile phone technology everything is the same but there are some changes in the user interface there are some additional features that are putting in so that samsung does not lose its market so that samsung can sustain in the market how can you add features to stick to the market that's one type of thing the other thai type is of course breakthrough innovation or disruptive innovations new products come new demands are created with new products new demands people never thought of those things but you create new demands so there are different types of innovations that all of you can work on as an innovator you should not have an impractical uh, dr shonku bosu was talking of going to the evangelists or the angel investors you should never go have impractical expectation all right do not over promise never do over promise never do under promise <coughs> both of them will fail you in getting the funding it must be at the right level that you can achieve and if you under promise there is no challenge in that and also whenever you work in a team one thing that the institute or the college must teach the students is to work in a group and not to work in silos and whenever you have a team you must know how to empower that team it's not that i have got a team but whatever i do will be done others will just be followers in that way good innovations do not come up i'll not take much of your time i'll just suggest a couple of i have done some uh, i'll i'll come to that at the end some of the areas in which you can think of really innovating and that is of real need today in our country is in energy all of you know any way you can save energy that is an innovate that is a contribution climate health delivery health delivery is a big 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 thing how can you give health services not only with the products but also through the delivery mechanism information how can you give for example i am giving a challenge here if there be any taker i'll be very happy in whatsapp lot of news come right we have flooded with information can you have an app or a daemon working in the background that will identify the fake news i'm telling you how to do it also you will have the daemon constantly working and whenever a news item comes you just go to the cloud and look at its validity and do some voting mechanism and warn the user that this is possibly a fake news of course you cannot say certainly but you can do that i'm just giving it any one of you can take it and any 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 app developer i'm sure uh, uh, you have got uh, many of them over here so in this era where we are flooded with information information innovation for information delivery is of tremendous important because we are flooded with misinformation as well also 
we are being made biased with information for example whenever you are getting an information con information or pro information whatever it is can you side by side put the other's point of view to the person so that he can make a balanced view another point that is very close to my heart is education innovation in education all said and done it computer science ai machine learning blah 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 all said and done the rural segment the rural children are still suffering with respect to education can we innovate can we find out new means not necessarily always high tech it can be low tech you can be entrepreneurs in the social sector as well where you can have a new innovative pedagogy with which you reach out to the villages you teach them in the local languages make some automatic translations or like all right so these are some of the things which you can um i have talked about medicine delivery um regarding health delivery medicine delivery is one of the um uh, one of uh, the important areas i am giving you another problem if there are any takers you know now a lot of people with age suffer from parkinson right i am sure you can do it in your lab you will need a 3d printer and some technology with which you can nullify this vibration or compensate this vibration so that it can act they can hold a pen and write or they can hold a spoon and eat the food will not fall we'll just strap something over here just put it up is a challenge of innovation for the low vision people lot of people lose their eyesight with time can you make big keyboards glowing keyboards in which they will be able to type even when there is a parkinson people start losing their motor resolution so you start typing at try to type q but your finger falls on w that often happens can you help them so that they can type and use the keyboard and enhance their motor resolution i have myself developed a couple of things by which the cerebral palsy affected children can type and can uh, work on a computer i can share those things with you and the offer i was going to make is that there are quite a few beta level things that have been done and i need volunteers under snu or techno india group whatever uh, who are ready to take make this as a final product and take it to the market all right if there are some innovators i can share those uh, products with you and you can do that maths is a horrendous thing for all of you all of us so can you have some math games so that we can encourage the school level students for not not very abstract maths but normal maths what we need what what maths do we need sir we need only up to uh, maybe whatever we teach in school all those maths we do not need in our life and the students get dropped off by some complicated simultaneous equation solving or algebraic manipulation etc but in real life what they need is a profit and loss uh, calculation of interests and all those we cannot even take the common students the first generation learners up to that level can you have mathematical games not necessarily on a tab immediately i know all of you will make an app and make it on a tab but all the students will not get tab can you make a board game in which they can which will be cheaper and in which they will be able to play all right another challenge i am giving you and with that i'll conclude shonku sleeps well he said i also sleep well till now but there are times when people have got disturbed sleep 
there are works being done and you can also do it here if you can make it low cost if you can play certain type of sound while a person is sleeping then the brain waves are slowed down with that type of music the waves become slowed down and as the waves become slowed down you get deeper and deeper sleep so all what you need is to have some earphone attached while you go to sleep and in addition if you can have an eeg probe that will be further better which we which can feed a particular sort of music to you which will slow down the brain wave so those who are losing sleep can sleep well and have a better day right so i gave you a couple of problems i won't elongate my um, speech any further i think i'm stuck to 20 minutes uh, commitment and i i know that within this time many of you have lost your attention and uh, so i'd stop here i wish you all the best i'd once again reiterate to the director to have a tinkering lab here thank you very much thank you thank you sir so much for that powerful message only he can break down innovation in that manner and make it sound so simple so alluring so interesting thank you so much but for your first problem well these people have already come out with a cross breed between uh, bumble and snapchat how to impress your girlfriend that they have come out already with an app which is a cross breed between bumble and snapchat and it is already what some kind of an accolade at bnccr international trade fair so they are there <laughs> they are trying to solve problems <laughs> and as you said no problem is uh, you know cannot be solved you have to work towards it thank you so much for that message well inferno is bringing up several opportunities and today as you can see my friends and my students are rearranging the setup because we will sign an mou with sun ecotech ventures this is a unique opportunity where the college will collaborate with sun ecotech ventures and uh, members of sun ecotech ventures they're all there please a big round of applause for because their sustainable goals are creating huge standards for kolkata and changing the game of entrepreneurship social entrepreneurship for kolkata thank you so much uh, to of course mr chakraborty who heads sun ecotech ventures and and uh, their team i would request them to please come up on stage we will have the signing of the memorandum of understanding they will set up labs create ideation processes and generate sustainable products this is way to go of course a green project for all the world is looking green and nscc is where the thing starts thank you so much i would request uh, professor nag to help the dignitaries up on stage for the signing of the mou
can we have the signing please somebody is can we have the official signing of the mou please unique uh, you know moment when the education sector come kin collab collaborates with the industry to create a unique uh, setup like that for the students that will be driven by the students of NSEC we are hoping that several new projects sustainable eco friendly products would come out I would request Mr. Digvijay Chakraborty, MD, uh, CEO of Sanikotech Ventures, to please elaborate on our plans for the MIO. Yeah, Very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, all the dignitaries here on dais, and all our beloved students. So this is a unique opportunity. Most of my previous speakers have mentioned about the tinkering lab to innovation lab and other, other collaborations, the industry academia collaboration. So San Ecotech, as you saw in, on the board, is the first Go Green initiative from the city of Jai Kolkata. And from there, we started innovating many green technologies, biodegradable products, the renewable energy, and we have aggregated quite a large number of technology and products. And we have been able to scale it up from all parts of the country, as well as now to the global arena. So I think it will be a unique opportunity for us to learn and also impart necessary technology guidance to the future entrepreneurs and the students. So it's a collaboration between San Ecotech and the Netaji Shubhash Engineering College, and which is under the NISP, that is National Innovation of Startup Policy II, and the IIC as mentioned by the professors. So this is a unique opportunity, and we are sure that we'll be able to collaborate will be able to handhold and uh, you know unique journey towards this so next 3 to 5 years we are expecting we'll take this at a global level we have the synergy with multiple customers of various categories in fact we have been able to sell many of our products to the iits and many of the technology institutes all over the country right from the beginning you know almost kashmir to kanyakumari all the places some of our products have been sold and which have been appreciated by the customers at large. So we thank all of you. We thank the Nitaji Shubhash Engineering College authorities and the board of directors here present to make this happen. And let's begin this journey from here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Chakraborty. Yes, this is a unique, unique collaboration indeed. And um, uh, NSCC and uh, Sun Ecotech Ventures, this is a unique moment. A big round of applause for this moment indeed. A special moment for all of us. 
And um, of course, as uh, professors tell us, this would not have been possible without uh, the faculty members and the students and members of Sunny Kotek Ventures. Also, <laughs> Ms. Ina Boss, of course. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've asked me to say this, say this. <laughs> and um, we will uh, request our dignitaries to please visit uh, the next uh, door for the inauguration of the lab. Also, oh sorry, I forgot. The final exchange of the MO need to have happened for our photo op moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I would request the dignitaries to please visit the next room for the inauguration of the lab that we talked about with Sunny Kotek Ventures. We will resume in about five minutes for the panel discussion and felicitating our guests from the industry. you can't leave this is not a break you cannot go anywhere you have to sit you guys sit the dig I said only the dignitaries you guys are not going anywhere where are you going Guys, who are participating in the jam as the qualifiers for the debate, you guys can go out and attend that, but everyone else, please wait. We will have a presentation from one of our title sponsors, as well as resume the show very shortly. Do not leave right now. We'll have the break a bit later. Do not leave right now. Guys, Ryan Ayabi. Do not leave right now. Rudra is right. Sit.
presentation by Motovolt. Hey, Motovolt and Nampa Lecture, James? James We will quickly move over to the panel discussion. Do we have all the speakers here? Do we have all the panelists here with us?
participants for the debate competition are requested to attend the jam session which is being organized right outside of APC Hall. Everyone else is please, please, please be seated. We request all of you to stay here. We'll be resuming with the panel discussion very shortly. Okay? Participants for the debate, you're all requested to report to the room besides this for the jam. Everyone else stick around. We'll be having the panel discussion very shortly. Guys, please maintain silence. Guys, please maintain silence.
Mr. Bose, if you can please come inside. Yes. Are we, uh, is he here? James Bishesh? Okay, uh, we'll quickly move on to the panel discussion. Well, it is it's a very interesting plan and pa panel with a very interesting topic. The topic for today's discussion will be sustainable development and green initiative in entrepreneurship. And the panelists, I would call out their name one by one. I would request them to please come up on stage. First, with the moderator of our session, Mr. Digbija Chakraborty, MD and CEO of Sun Eco Tech Ventures. I would request our principal of NSEC, Professor Dr. Ghosh, to please felicitate uh, Mr. Chakraborty for us. I would request the students to please uh, take the tray to Professor Ghosh so that, you know, our guest can be felicitated. He's the moderator. Students, a round of applause. Can, you cannot stop clapping. This is a moment. Thank you so much. I would request uh, Mr. Chakraborty to please take his seat in the middle as he will be moderating the session. I would request our first panelist, Mr. Nirupam Choudhury, to please come up on stage. I would request the principal to also felicitate him. Of course, he's the director of NASCOM. He's a specialist in market intelligence, primary research, technology assessment, part of West Bengal government's IT sector's core committee, and a contributor to a number of marketing <laughs> initiatives. He's worked as the analyst and consultant with over 50 established and emerging IT and communication companies. He's, he has immense knowledge and expertise in the field. We are extremely lucky to have him with us today and it will be an honor to have him speak in the panel. Our next panelist, of course, we are extremely lucky, Shami Ji, Shami Bedakunandu Ji, Professor and Founder, Head, Chemical Engineering Heritage Institute of Technology. Thank you so much for being with us today. Of course, he is a professor, founder, head in chemical engineering of uh, Heritage Institute of Technology. He is the honorary president of Vivekananda Institute of Environment and Management, Kolkata. Uh, he is a sectional committee member and a former president of Engineering Science and Indian Society Congress Government of India. A wide round of applause for him, of course. We are extremely lucky to have him as well. What a diverse panel. Thank you so much.
yes, most precious thing. In today's world, gachta shop take a bit of jewelry. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Most important gift, rightly said. Um, our next panelist is, of course, Shantanu Dattu Gupta. Mr. Shantanu Dattu Gupta, he's the Associate Director, Market Development, GBCI. I would request the principal to felicitate him. He's the Associate Director, Market Development, GBCI, East India, Bangladesh, and Vietnam markets. International Green Building and Climate Action Leader. He's a public speaker, we all know that. Uh, collaboration and Strategy Specialist, Generalist, uh, Six Sigma Certified Green Building and Climate Action Thought Leader. 15 years of experience in market transformation and project management as business strategies. A wide round of applause for him. As I said, a diverse panel. It's an enriching panel. Thank you so much. Our next panelist is uh, Mr. James Bishash. Is he here? Yes, thank you. Uh, he's a National Ales Manager, Institutional Sales and B2B Alliance, leads corporate sales at Motorvolt Mobility, and has been engaged in nurturing corporate sales and strategy on ground of implementation for Hyundai Motors, Mahindra Automotive, and Axis Bank in his past endeavor, and has experience of over 17 years in sales and dealer development. Thank you so much. Mr. Bishash, for being with us today, for agreeing to be a part of the panel. Are we, uh, do we need more chairs here? Students, can you please make sure that our guests are all seated, our panelists are all seated? Mr. Chakraborty, I think it would, uh, you know, be better if you sit in the. Do you want to stand and moderate? I'll sit here, and I'll just take the last few minutes. Oh, after the speech. okay. I don't have that. Or oh, do you do you want the intro? Yeah, the intro of the names that we will produce. Oh, sure, sure. sure. Thank you so much. Uh, it looks like a very good panel and with, uh, I'm sure with promising talks would come out and motivation for our students would come out from this panel. Uh, uh, over to uh, Mr. Digbijay Chakraborty.
That's why we're, we are delaying. Yeah, we are delaying almost. Also, all right. We're in the interact mode. We are starting late one hour now. So yes. Very good afternoon, all the audience, the Nitaji Shuvar Engineering College, the administrative body, and all our distinguished panelists with me today and we'll be discussing one of the important subject and I hope this is a long-lasting sustainability that we'll be talking of. The subject is Sustainable Development and Green Initiative in Entrepreneurship. As you all know, in fact, the last inaugural session, most of the people have touched upon and talked about the innovation and which is more sustainable and how it is applicable for the entrepreneurs to lead. See, when we talk about the sustainability, see, definitely the fundamental pillars, we talk about the environmental, social, and economic, and also the human sustainability to improve the human capital. So if we talk about some of the examples, is like the harnessing of solar energy to reduce pollution to the environment, maybe a crop rotation for improving the soil fertility, and considering the ecosystem, thereby protecting the environment. So as an entrepreneur, everybody has a role to play. And more they become green, they become sustainable, and they can also educate the customers at large they, they also make the customers aware about the dem their demand and the usability of the products. How they should demand the products from the entrepreneurs. How the entrepreneurs should build the ecosystem which will be more sustainable for the world. And we often talk about the, what you refuse, you do not need. What you reduce, what you do need. And reuse what you consume, recycle what you cannot refuse, and reduce and refuse or transform the rest. So this is how the mantras that we'll be talking for the future to come. So I have the eminent panelists, as I mentioned before, I just take the names. I have Mr. Nirupam Choudhury, Director NASCOM to me. I have Mr. Santanu Dattagupta, the Associate Director of GBCI. I have Swami Vedagananda, Professor and Founder Head, Chemical Engineering Heritage Institute of Technology. And I have Mr. James Biswas, Motorfold Representative, who is a prominent e-cycle innovator from the city Kolkata. So, Welcome to all. I first request Mr. Nirupam Choudhury, who is representing NASCOM. And many of you must be knowing about the NASCOM. If you do not know much, you can still Google. So NASCOM is one of the pioneer in the entrepreneurship in the India. So I have got the opportunity to present many of the, you know, uh, uh, many of the research papers with NASCOM, many of the white paper that we published together with NASCOM across the cities in India. So I'd be hearing from him, we'd be hearing from him, from Mr. Nirupam Choudhury, that what are the implications and how do you look at the sustainability and the green initiative in the entrepreneurship, sir? Thank you so much. A very good afternoon to all of you. Um, really happy to see, uh, you know, such enthusiasm and of course, the next two days, I, I was just going through the agenda and the, the panels that are lined up, very, very interesting agenda. And I think we are touching upon one of the most important ones at these times. Just yesterday, we had this G20 summit started in our city. Many of you would have heard about it, seen some flags near Sector 5, have you seen, uh, how many of you are aware, aware of G20 summit in India? Good, I, at least I, I see few hands. Yeah. 
the very purpose, the very purpose that several countries, like 20 countries, have come together and trying to address some very crucial concerns for the globe at present. And one of the most important ones is in the area of sustainability. Of course, in our city yesterday, we are, we are focusing on financial inclusion and other associated areas. But globally, this is the most important challenge in our front. Um, friends, uh, our panelists, uh, our pa moderator already mentioned about uh, the role of, the importance of sustainability in any kind of a new development, any ent entrepreneurship development that you guys are doing. We'll come, we'll touch very briefly on that. But before this, um, all of you are aware of the kind of alarming scenario that uh, the world is at, at, at the present moment, the, the problems that the, we are going through, right? Uh, the, the rising, the glo we know about the global warming concerns. Um, we know the kind of population boom which has happened across cities, especially if you talk about this part of the, this part of the globe and look at countries like India, Bangladesh, and the adjoining countries, there are severe concerns, right? And we know fossil fuels depleting fast. Um, we know there has to be new ways to make sure that cities run. We have, unfortunately, uh, in, in our air-conditioned rooms, we, we run so many ACs and take so many other, uh, uh, you know, steps to make ourselves comfortable but we are actually in increase the, increasing the carbon footprint, right? So let me quickly tell you what we, our focus areas from NASCOM are. So from NASCOM, we have a division called NASCOM 10,000 Startups. It has started about eight years back. It is focused, the, the primary aim of that in, in, uh, unit was to make sure that India has the the first 10,000 tech startups who would solve actual problems, business problems, and problems that, for the enterprises, problems from consu for consumers, right? We started in Bangalore about eight years back. The next year, uh, about seven years back, after Bangalore, in Kolkata, we started the 10,000 10, startups in unit in Webel Bhavan in, uh, in sector five. In the last six years, we have seen close to about 600 or 700 applications from tech startups. The very good response. And so far, we've incubated almost 200 tech startups. And they are solving a wide range of problems, wide, wide areas they are targeting, from healthcare to the fintech to retail, with diverse areas. But what is becoming increasingly essential, as our moderator just mentioned, is that for any kind of solution that we are doing right now for, for either enterprise, either B2C or B2B, it is becoming increasingly important to keep the social and the ESG parameters in mind. Environmental, social, extremely, extremely important at this point. So, so a, even if you, if you look at, uh, I, I, I spoke about carbon footprint, I, I'm sure some of you would touch that. So in any kind of uh, programs that are being built, you have to make sure that you are maintaining certain protocols, certain standards, like how waste management is happening. I'm so glad to see that you have signed a MOU with an academic institution where you, you are in the field of uh, you know, recyclable energy, and I'm sure there are many more things that you, ha you ha were doing. It is great to see that you will have mentorship from people like him, and his team along with you, make the best use of that. I think that is most crucial. And even in our uh, 10,000 startups warehouse also, we see many startups are actually targeting those social concerns. They are targeting those areas where they can actually make some impact. So I'll, I'll just pause here and I'll, I'll of course go to other, other panelists. But so to say, in, from NASCOM perspective, ESG and sustainability is a top priority right now. Thank you very much, Mr. Choudhury. As you have heard from him, that how NASCOM has created 10,000 plus startup ecosystem, and most of them are the tech startup and across the cities in India, and many of them have globalized, you know, their uh, technology startups from the NASCOM platform itself. And as he mentioned, that it has in all the industry sectors, right from the healthcare, right from the IT in healthcare, right from the other other uh, areas of the industries. 
So now I come to Swamiji, Vedak Gananda Professor and Founder Head Chemical Engineering Heritage Institute of Technology. Swamiji, from here, if we talk about the, in the chemical engineering, we know that it has a huge application for the biodegradable, the sustainable products, the organic culture to bring, and right from our old heritage, how we can really introduce those things and can benefit the nature and the society at large. Actually, Actually, this uh, sustainable development, it has got four areas. One is the cradle-to-cradle -cradle mechanism. That means whatever industrial products you are to use or you are to manufacture, so that should have the fitting design so that nothing is extra. Uh, time is limited. I can give you one example uh, in... Uh, Holdia, uh, there was one uh, industry set up, uh, set up by government decision. Now, after uh, that, the company did not see the production. There was a problem in design. Okay, and long years the employees got salary, but did not uh, got the production. So this cradle to cradle design is a very important issue. The next is the there is, uh, you see, the development and sustainable development. So indiscriminate development of the world, so that is not uh, desirable. So if that is the thesis, then the antithesis is the, you can say that there is no development like Singur or uh, like Noyach or Hub. Actually, I was in that committee uh, in Noyachar Hub, you know, that is uh, just opposite to Holdia. So it's a chemical hub. The, that time, the government planned that. But the, our, uh, I mean, Union uh, of India government, so they uh, felt that this is a coastal zone. So naturally, the hub did not come up at all. So that is the an antithesis. And this reaction between thesis and antithesis, that actually gives you the synthesis. And that synthesis is the sustainable technology. And one such sustainable technology, if you uh, uh, consider, that is, it will ultimately generate the circular economy. Uh, actually, uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Uh, Venkat Mohan uh, of IICT, so he is in the Prime Minister's task force of this uh, circular economy. So we often interact uh, and just, I mean, a few uh, two days before I came from that uh, program of Indian Science Congress. Uh, so their Government of India's vision was adequately focused on this circular economy. So you are also to uh, find out that exactly how can you bring circular economy. How can you bring circular economy? And the other thing is that there should be the green economy. And then green economy, there are the two uh, ideas. That one is one should, we should produce more. Another is you should, we should consume less. Unless you can, con uh, can adopt this consume less, here you see lots of water bottles are here. Some are, somebody has taken a sip and simply put it like that. So if our country has to rise, you have to give up this habit. If you take one water pot, either you fully consume or you take it on your pocket. You cannot leave it. So that, that is the case of green economy. I, as a consultant of green audit, I go to uh, many organizations. I, I think I have done green audit for uh, many engineering colleges and also green audit is also there in the NAC 7 criteria. So there the entrepreneurs, the, uh, those are the students, those are aspiring for startup. So they should know only, not only the manufacturing sector, there are the immense opportunity for the 
service sector at all. So if you have, if you develop your knowledge in, in those service sector areas, then also you can have lots of uh, such, uh, I mean, benefits. I mean, you can derive the benefits. And then lastly, you should resort to Swami Vivekananda. See, uh, uh, more than 100 years before, so his vision was that unless we combine the Western science and Eastern philosophy, he called Vedanta and Upanishad. So then, the, then only the, uh, you can say, he said that havoc will be achieved. So that is Swami Vivekananda's idea. And here our uh, country, mostly uh, it is focused on the, the country's uh, backbone, is the villages not the city like Kolkata or the Panchasha or Gaudiya. So it is the villages. So I have taken some initiatives. Of course, uh, I got the help from uh, CSIR, uh, Niri, that in heritage, which is my profession, so uh, nearby two villages I adopt. Uh, our students, they had the green audit and all these things, and then how their wastewater systems and then uh, energy uh, systems, energy uh, limitless, uh, lim I mean consumption of the limits for the energy, all these things, the villagers, we trained. And accordingly, for that proposal, we sent to Government of India. And I am very happy that Government of India, the Rural Development Ministry, they have accepted one such proposal and they are going to set up a, a type of uh, plant that is known as root zone plant. Root zone plant means the uh, some plants, so that plants are, for example, say Kolabuti Gach. Tumre Bangla jano ki na jani na? Kolabuti Gach. So that has got the immense potential of clearing wastewater. So this is a small plant. It has been sanctioned for that village. So like that. And the last thing I tell you, this is a mantra that Sahavir Jang Karava Avahai. So if you feel that I am only an entrepreneur, then you will be just a consultant. So entrepreneur means it will be a team. That is why today uh, this organization, the institute, signed MOU with San Eco, uh, system. So, so that one should have the, should extend their hands. And if you can do this, Sahavir Jang, if you do it together, then we can have the glorified thing. So these are the few ideas I uh, put up. Uh, if you, w w in our Vivekananda Institute, we uh, generally sometimes, uh, I mean, offer uh, some small projects, I mean, project funding also uh, to the students, very small, some uh, 10,000, 5,000 rupees. We say you have to submit the project then we also uh, talk to our uh, well wishers well, uh, so that we can get some fund. And I have found many such people, they have done it. One is that the, uh, the recycling of uh, that uh, sanitary napkins. So this is a wonderful project the students, they have done. So like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Indeed, many thanks, many thanks to Swamiji for this insightful dialogues that he has just given us. In fact, I am fortunate personally to listen to many of the Swamiji's in my life in many of these management seminars where all the global CEOs were present in the seminar and all were spellbound when Swamiji, he delivered the speeches about the sustainability and the entrepreneurship. In fact, the Ramakrishna Mission and many of the other global institutions like he represents, you know, can enrich us in big way. And these are the big, big learnings. And it is easy to learn the way they explain things. As he touched upon the economy, I just like to touch a few data that is with me. That India, as we are living in this country, we are hugely expanding and contributing to the global economy. If you see the Indian export hits a record 
despite the severe pandemic that has hit the world and India in particular, as well as the neighboring countries. So it has crossed more than 300 billion in 2022, and by 2023, it will cross 400 billion exports, despite such a downturn in the economy and the crisis in the healthcare. And the import also, the foreign in investment also, that has crossed also 37 billion that way. So the economic development, as Swamiji has touched upon, so it's a major green target, the energy target that India has achieved so far. India has achieved, he said, you know, as per the Paris Agreement in 2015, the India was supposed to cover the target by, by 2030, but it has already achieved eight years ahead by the renewable energy and the nuclear by innovation and synergy. So these are some of the important things that we must remember that we are living in a country which is really progressing at a much faster rate compared to any other economy. And as Swamiji has mentioned about his uh, adoption of a couple of villages nearby in these areas of uh, operations. So we definitely would be having Swamiji also on our board of advisors. So definitely we'll be taking a lot of inputs from Swamiji in future and the green technology, how we can really make a green city or the green villages within our state of West Bengal. I just mentioned one, you may be uh, you know, seeing in the Google that there is a village in Tamil Nadu which is a smart village, is a complete green village which is catering energy to the entire state of Tamil Nadu from that and every house is a green, every water body is clean and pure and their pollution level is much much below average compared to anywhere else and they are really the sustainable development making unit in the in the state of Tamil Nadu and which we can also replicate here because you already have the students you know is a, we are sitting in the techno city and there are a lot of villages around where we can really implement all those things that as Swamiji has also mentioned. Now coming to the next point, I would uh, be interested to come to Mr. Santanu Dattagupta, he is the Associate Director of GBCI. So. I request Mr. Dr. Gupta, how you implement things, what are your future plans for the green energy and the sustainability? Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Shantanu Dr. Gupta and I am as your director has, uh, as uh, sir has mentioned. But most importantly, I am a student. I am much more comfortable that side rather than this side. First of all, I would like to tell that, you know, sustainability is not a choice anymore, is not optional anymore. It is mandatory, it is imperative. Uh, how many of you, obviously most of you uh, will raise hand right now, how many of you know Leonardo DiCaprio? See, the hands are more. So, there is a, Leonardo DiCaprio, why, why I mentioned that, there's a reason. There's a documentary made by Discovery Channel along with Mr. DiCaprio. He was a UN ambassador for peace, climate change. It is called Before the Flood. Please uh, Google it and go to the YouTube and watch the documentary for one and a half hour you invest. You'll be scared that where we are standing right now in terms of global climate change, uh, it, is, it, it is a very scary situation. So that is why, uh, you know, sustainability is not optional. It is mandatory in terms of energy, in terms of water, waste, human experience, and carbon footprint. Now, I'll, I'll give a short uh, background of my organization called GBCI, Green Business Certification Incorporated. It is an international arm of US Green Building Council. Uh, we work or we uh, uh, deal with buildings. Uh, you know that buildings are the biggest, one of the biggest energy guzzlers. Uh, worldwide, we are working in 184 countries and territories. 
Uh, I am responsible for Eastern India, Bangladesh and Vietnam markets where I deal with more than 2,000 projects, green projects. So, uh, one of the most important things uh, I would like to mention over here as we are in a, a college, technological college, that we are experiencing a huge gap or huge demand of green professionals. Demand is more, but supply is less. Uh, so we are extremely happy that you have signed an MOU uh, with this university, uh, with this college. Uh, any movement, uh, this is a green movement we are talking about, any movement starts from an educational institution. And you have been lucky to get innovation centers, supports from your teachers and professors and uh, industry leaders as well. So as far as we are concerned, uh, we are probably the oldest uh, organizations uh, in in whole world uh, to, to do, deal with green buildings. Uh, somebody was talking about, uh, probably Nirupanda, you, you're talking about green cities, smart cities. So we are working, uh, we have gone beyond buildings right now. We are talking about ESG, environmental, social, and governance. We are talking about green communities, and also we are talking about green cities. Uh, for your information, uh, like, city like cities like Dubai, Washington, DC, these are all, all, all platinum rated green cities. And most importantly, Surat in India, it is a platinum rated lead city. So, uh, you know, our, uh, our uh, stand or uh, our uh, vision is quite clear that we are working, we'll be working with government, we'll be working with private sectors, in industry leaders, and also startups to incorporate sustainability to the core of the business. It is not optional, it is mandatory. So it will be in the core or in the, or what do you call it, in genes of the organizations. That's it. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Mr. Dattagupta. So the way you have deliberated the green certification for the green housing, green infrastructure, and we need those green infrastructure projects in the city because where we are living the charity begins at home if we are green certified so definitely it will be inculcated in our discipline in our culture and we'll be promoting this to all over the society and we cumulative effect will be to make things green and greener so now as you know that mobility is a huge chapter mobility in terms of the, your own personal vehicle, in terms of the, your commercial vehicles, in terms of the other fuel usage. So in all terms, in, in, including your health factors and controlling the pollution, how we can control the pollution by the e-innovation, that is the electric vehicle mobility or the electric cycle, whatever you call it, so this is a huge chapter and this is the upcoming chapter to, to the global because we know the electric vehicles, we know the other electric two-wheelers and other things. In fact, I'll also come because the innovation has just started. We are also into the uh, electric vehicle mode. So now I'll be hearing, we'll be hearing from the person, Mr. Jim Biswas, who is the motorhold manufacturer in this city of joy. So it's really a joy to have Motorvolt with us. So we'll be hearing from Mr. Biswas about his journey, innovation, and how he really sees the mobility of this nature can control the pollution and give us a better life. Here you go. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> My name is James Biswas, and I am basically heading the corporate and B2B alliances for motor world mobility and it's a proud uh, feeling to me a part of this group in front of the students addressing this uh, um, uh, meeting and uh, talking about sustainability. 
So we all know about the Green Revolution Go Mission uh, program that the government of India has already started, and uh, the addressing the carbon footprint has had in the nation. Now the thing is that how do we uh, actually bring about a change in the uh, segment of e-mobility in the um, you know two-wheeler or three-wheeler or four-wheeler market? where we can bring affordable solutions to the general public for rural transportation as well as uh, creating value for the uh, end user. So Motor World Mobility Private Limited is a company uh, which is uh, uh, based in Kolkata and the, all the products are manufactured in Kolkata and it is being um, uh, in 100 uh, cities right now, touch points are there, where we are basically producing uh, e-cycles and e-bikes for the general public for their mobility for rural transportation and last mile delivery. Now the thing is that in terms of last mile delivery, I want to touch upon this point is that we have seen a lot of companies like Zomato, Swiggy, uh, Domino's. Um, we have seen um, uh, companies like Zepto, who has been using uh, two wheelers uh, for their last mile delivery in terms of uh, you know, reaching out to the household. What we do is that we tie up with these organizations and we provide them e-mobility solutions through e-cycles. So what we do is that we have affordable range of e-cycles where we build frames, carriers at the back. We design, customize these cycles so that they can use it for their last mile delivery. So till now, we have associates like Domino's, we have associates like Swiggy, Zomato, Zepto, as well as a lot of pharmaceutical companies who have tied up for their riders on this platform. Not only it is helping them to uh, reduce their uh, overall cost of operations, but also giving value to the customers by you know, giving them a, a, you know, a fast and affordable solutions in their uh, consumption. So the best part about, I would like to touch about three points in this uh, electric uh, two-wheeler that we have that will be very, very um, uh, attractive for you is that number one point is that we are giving the cost of operations of this electric cycle as rupees seven for 100 kilometers. So that is a phenomenal uh, movement where a person can uh, uh, save on fuel, where the petrol cost, diesel cost is rising uh, havoc and uh, creating a mess in the situation in terms of uh, you know, carbon footprint as well as uh, you know, many you know, people who aspire to buy a two-wheeler, you know, has to look after, you know, uh, this petrol cost. So, it is rupees seven per kilometer. Number two, this e-cycle gives a range of 30 to 100 kilometers in a single charge. That means, so if you charge your cycle for two hours to three hours, you can go up to 100 kilometers in a single charge. That's number two. And the third is this is a smart cycle which you can connect with your app and also see the hygiene of the cycle where the battery consumption and the health factor of the cycle can be monitored. It can be locked and it can be unlocked through your app. So uh, talking about this uh, motor world mobility, uh, it is a three years old company as a startup. Uh, by Mr. Uh, Tushar Chaudhary, he's the MD and founder, and he's the owner of Himadri Chemicals, and uh, they are into this trade for 19 years in Calcutta, and uh, we believe to partner with Government of India, as well as we have partnered with also Army, in the Army, in the cantonments, for the police personnel, and with the doctors, as well as we are now uh, partnering with the government of India, registering our products in the GEM portal, the government e-marketplace portal, so that all the public sector units and the government offices and the IT companies can benefit from this e-cycle. So we bring, we are uh, having a vision to revolutionize the way the uh, electric mobility uh, you know, solutions can be addressed through this e-cycle and e-bikes. Thank you.
Wow, this is incredible, incredible. So guys, how many of you would like to embrace this e-mobility made by the Motorfold? I think all of you would be interested to have that one at home, okay? So uh, as he mentioned, you know, how he has commercialized in terms of, you know, helping all the service providers like Swizi, Zumarju and all, and all other, you know, uh, similar uh, service providers and helping them to control the pollution within their city. And is this all uh, also manual uh, bicycle or? So the uh, so beauty of this product, as I missed to say, sir, uh, is that this is pedal assisted. So once you finish the charge, for God's sake, you can go back home while pedaling. So this is a cycle for, as well as an electric cycle at the same time. And your body will also be sustainable. Exactly. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have a partnership with them. So uh, thank you very much, Mr. Biswas, for that. So I'll come back to uh, Mr. Choudhury once again uh, to NASCOM. That you know, after hearing all these things, and there are a lot more to know. Actually, we know that globally, it's uh, emerging uh, technologies. How you know is revolutionize uh, the entire uh, green sectors, and how you know we are also transforming people to use and apply those uh, green technologies in their daily lives. So. NASCOM, as you all heard that, you know, it's um, uh, the uh, 10,000 plus startup and more in the IT, IT startups. But other than these IT startup, definitely they must be contributing to the uh, green energy as well. So if you can uh, give a few examples that some of your IT startups and how they are really contributing to take things forward. One thing is IT is a sustainable thing because even if you have a larger manufacturing industry or any other green technology product, you need an IT support that way also. So it's a mandatory you know, component of every industry that we, we are talking about may it be green and uh, otherwise. So any, any such examples if you can give us that how they are contributing in these green and sustainable projects. Uh, sure, sure. Um, in fact, uh, we last uh, Bengal summit, we have this MOU with uh, MSME department of government of West Bengal, okay? And we have this opportunity to go to several uh, MSME clusters and there, and many of you might not know, um, West Bengal has some amazing uh, clusters and doing uh, in, in area of handicrafts, textiles, gems and jewelry. Uh, some of the products you would be amazed I mean, if you if you hear the facts uh, and they're startling facts but unfortunately what happens is many of these guys like uh, even if you talk about us we were uh, in a place called Fulia Shantipo those, those areas the guys who are actually making those products they earn very less they earn about 400 500 rupees a day that's the kind of wage right so there is a conscious initiative, as you rightly pointed out, there is a conscious initiative from government as well as from NASCOM. We, we position it like tech for non-tech, okay? And how we can make uh, better efficiency for the guys who are producing these goods, very ama amazing quality goods, how to market them better, how to give them more business. The Once the money comes in, the money flows in, it can be properly used for making sure that the next generation takes it forward as well, right? So there are several initiatives, from starting from the uh, lines of logistic management to inventory to digital marketing. There are amazing ways by which you are actually not spending much but getting those necessary benefits. So we are actually working pretty closely with uh, some, many of these clusters with government. And in many of these cases, we find that those solutions would be uh, facilitating a typical, so to say, e, uh, I mean, sustainable delivery platform, if you look at it. And also consciously, as you rightly pointed out, we just, we cannot forget the last two years of COVID, we, we saw what we went through. But behind all that, if you, you know, on a hindsight, if you think back, year 2021, I was just driving from sector 5 to my home in this part of the city. And the road was so clean, the, the sky really looked so different. And uh, it, it seemed as if like we are in a different world, right? So 
of course the covid has its very very bad part we lost many many dear and uh, uh, you know near and dear ones but at the same time just by making sure that we are maybe commuting less or commuting through as you mentioned is a very beautiful solution the e cycles or right now we're talking about e vehicles there are new regulations coming up which will make sure that we have to go the hybrid way i mean there is no other option there are amazing research being done in the areas of batteries the the battery the, there's a the, the, there's a of course there's a tremendous potential uh, and there are some brilliant works being done out of our, our from our city itself so uh, coming coming to that point so making sure that we are actually not uh, burning fuels or making sure that we we can sustain with minimal as swami ji was pointing out with whatever we need don't use uh, maybe not use the single use plastic bottles like uh, in in nascom initiatives now we have there is a conscious uh, decision that we will not use flexes which are plastic flexes etc those things are discarded because the you cannot uh, and this is a conscious decision so making sure that we try to have digital events don't use paper not required you have this smart device it has every every facility right so if you are actually even e register somebody somebody can come in and he, he just needs to tap right so less use of paper uh making sure that we are using only glass bottle those kind of initiatives are happening inside the enterprise now coming back to your point so across sectors be it marketing be it uh, you know typical inventory logistics handling supply chain be it uh, reaching out to customers uh, in each of these spheres uh, we see there are there are some amazing projects going on with startups and many of these corporates are joining hands with startups they are co-creating as i i see uh, brilliant examples um so there are startups who are working with gentlemen like them and were trying to contribute to such solutions that is most crucial even in area of uh, green buildings green cities there are there are amazing opportunities uh, in many of the buildings now you have this uh, solar panels right on the rooftop and you have ravidashmi avashanam uh, absolutely yeah and you, you know what absolutely you, you, you know that new that uh, over the new town canal yeah. there is solar panels now so this can even once you land in kolkata airport you can see those so many solar pa solar panels there making sure the hotels uh, mandatorily have those the rooftops those kind of initiatives are extremely crucial at these times and i'm sure with young minds like them who are actually many of them are going to join and build such products which which are sustainable products this will be even better and this is this is a conscious initiative and this is ongoing process thank you very much maharaj i am coming to you uh, because we have almost come to an end of this uh, uh, panel session but uh, i'll come to uh, maharaj for some of the insightful uh, points that you know he has already uh, indicated before uh, maharaj we know that uh, this waste management is a huge challenge because many of our panelists have already mentioned about it and we from sani kotek is also uh, continuously you know striving to uh, develop the new products so that this uh, plastic pollution can be you know kept under control or it can be better uh, in an improved manner every day by day so i think chemical engineering has got lot of things to do on in that because we know in each of the municipal area of say for example in west bengal itself uh, i was really surprised when there is a requirement of 50000 garbage bags per day in fact we couldn't deliver that much you know the kind of requirement this is i'm talking about only one municipality or uh, the corporation is even bigger so how we can really help this you know in controlling that from the chemical engineering point of view can we say, because we are producing lot of garbage bags but we produce in the other parts of the country from daman you know with the raw material is there and we can produce and you know we bring it here and distribute across the country but can you really help us maharaj you know from the chemical engineering point of view can we have the you know our uh, you know uh, budding startups can they also enter into this field we can, they can implement them you know install the machines here under the your technology so that you know we, we can make it a much greener field today actually you see that making fuel oil from the plastics the reliance has made one uh, i mean uh, project one endeavor and they are doing this 
But the thing is that actually initially our idea was that we will go for pyrolysis and from pyrolysis some products. But if you go for pyrolysis, then that will also create some obnoxious products. I mean, uh, say fumes and other things. But this Reliance, uh, particularly technology, it, this is totally eco-friendly. But actually, they don't uh, marketing it. I mean, they are keeping within uh, their domain because it is uh, ultimately the Reliance will, uh, I mean, uh, distribute it uh, for the country. So that is the idea. But I suggest you one thing. Just now I heard the, uh, uh, I mean, <coughs> NASCOM's idea that reject flex. But what we do, we collect flex. That plastic flex, we collect it and we distribute to the villagers because plastic flex has got an immense use. If it is a little bigger flex, so many of the villagers in our country so they are having the uh, problem of that rooftop leaking and all such problems and they don't have the money to seal it. But that temporarily they use those type of flex. So that is one type of, that is why one should have the indigenous use and indigenous technology. I mean, definitely technologies are, for example, that uh, sometimes that from uh, bigger consumer uh, I mean, outlets, so it comes that this is not a plastic bag, and that is a biodegradable plastic. But that bag cost immense. Uh, I mean, uh, I think around uh, 20. If you uh, order a product of 50 rupees, and if the bag costs 20 rupees, then who will order it? So that is why some indigenous things should be there. So that is my idea. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. And now uh, I'm. Uh, putting this to the other panelists, if you want to add any more uh, value in this and from your perspective as well as from the perspective of the discussion and the green revolution that we have been talking of. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say one thing, uh, as Nirupamda was saying that, you know, a uh, lot of opportunities in green buildings and green cities, communities, etc. Uh, it used to be, five years ago, a, it used to be a piece of paper uh, acknowledging your effort to make a green building. But today, it is the start point of your journey. When you are making a building, uh, we give a certification on the basis of design and your intent to make a green building, but the real game starts after that in operation. So today it is possible and it is an opportunity for them, uh, opportunity to take startups. We do have a product uh, which me measures live performance of a building, live. So we call it, if you cannot measure anything, you cannot improve it, right? We are talking about net zero, we are moving towards net zero. How to move towards net zero if you do not know how this building is performing right now in terms of energy, water, waste, human experience, and transportation. So we have a, we have a platform, OpenAPI uh, cloud-based platform called ARC, A-R-C, uh, which gives you uh, runners in terms of these five parameters, how your buildings are uh, working, and gives you, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, solution that you know how to make it better so lot of uh, opportunities uh, in building industry for AI developers for software developers are there so your building is alive so this is the innovation I just wanted to talk about yes uh, uh, as Mr. Shantanu said that a uh, lot of emphasis is there with the corporates that they have to be ISO certified in terms of, there are, there are points where he has to mention what are the green initiatives they have taken uh, in terms of you know, their certifications. So this, you know, these kind of products like you know, electric vehicles, two wheelers, these taking them in their fleet, in their platform adds a major, uh, you know, uh, point in their ISO certifications, like companies like PwC 
companies like Blue Dart, companies like uh, you know, uh, Gati, DTDC, all these companies have a program of getting certified under the green initiative. So, you know, startups, people who are, you know, getting into this field has a lot of uh, opportunity to go forward. So, this is all. Thank you very much. So, uh, we have come to an end of the session. Is there any question? We have just two minutes. Any question from the audience to any of the panelists? Okay, so as an organizing member of this, first of all, thank you all so very much for this amazing panel discussion. Uh, you know, this is one of the topics that comes up so very much in our daily lives. Sustainability and green energy, it is something that you write like uh, articles and stuff on growing up throughout your school days. And then you actually get here and it's like one of those integral parts of your life. So something that, a uh, couple of things that really struck with me. Uh, first of all, you talked about certain water lilies that purify the water. So things like that, there are various things like that in our native culture, in our local culture, you talked about Eastern philosophy. That if integrated, large scale, could yield results, which could revolutionize India. So we see all of this happening at a smaller scale. You talked about adopting villages. So what is the scope, first of all, for incorporating technologies such as these in a way that is more, uh, it's almost an oxymoron at this point to say it like this, but in a more automated way or in a more industrial way so that we could kind of you know, use it in a like, global thing so that it can actually make jobs, create jobs and spread out. So, so and it, it's the worst idea that you have uh, yeah. Our next panel is about to start. We can go much on offline, you know, have further discussion mm. on that. But, but sorry, that if where you is can people? touch it. That yeah, Swami if Vivekananda said that you but give me hundred, you give me hundred men, uh, that will change the world. So naturally, that is the problem. When I did this, I had the immense problem of getting, of course, the students, those are working with me or under my project, so they were very much interested. But other students, I, I tried to uh, I mean, make it much bigger, larger group. Others said, that is me kya nokri jaldi mil jata hai? <laughs> so, so <laughs> like that. So where is people? So that is the people development, the human development, that is human resource development. So that is the main thing for doing this. So uh, thank you all our esteemed panelists here and they have contributed uh, in a much bigger way and there is no end to it and you can all be connected to our, you know, all our panelists offline. And in between, if there is any question, you can also email it to your uh, authority, uh, to, the, to your respective departments. We can also address to that. And thank you very much, Techno India, the Netaji Shubhash Engineering College, all the students who have participated in this event. And thank you so much. Wish you all the very best. Uh, thank you so much to all the panelists. In fact, this was an enriching experience. We all were. Uh, you know, live watching this entire session, yes, for a photo op. And please, you guys also come in because they were also here <laughs> doing the entire thing. Yes, sit. <laughs> we will we will send it over. Thank you so much to the panelists. I would request uh, Ms. Bose, uh, HR Director of SNU, to please, uh, you know, thank the panelists for being with us today. Thank you, my eminent uh, panelists, speakers. I wasn't here, uh, present, but I was uh, all along watching the Facebook Live. So I've heard you all speaking. <laughs> I was upstairs and I've heard you all speaking. It was excellent. I'm sure the uh, students have benefited. I'm sure you have got newer insights uh, from the speakers, what they said. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have a small presentation. Right now? Okay, okay, so we're going for a break? Okay, we're going for a short break, short mind it, and then we'll reassemble for the second panel. It's another interesting topic. You guys would love it. Just we're taking a break off. Rudra, half an hour, 20 minutes? 
half an hour. Okay, thank you. Please do come back, students. Every student must leave from the back. Please don't use the front gate. Please use the back gate. Please be back in half an hour, guys.
Are you guys really back after the break? That yes, just will not do. Come on, give me a cheer. Good afternoon. Louder. This is just a... <laughs> okay. <laughs> For now, that will do. I'll prick you guys later. Uh, but uh, students, you know, innovation and entrepreneurship and creativity span all departments across all fields. And we're extremely fortunate to have with us today somebody who's taken innovation and creativity to our another level in the field of fashion and fashion designing and fashion technology. She started her own venture, Inga, and uh, of course she's one of the foremost and I might say formidable fashion designers of her time, Ogrimitra Paul. A big round of applause for her. We've all heard her speak in social media platforms. We all know she's an excellent orator as well. But today we get to hear her speak about her entrepreneurial journey and how she'd crafted it. Uh, I would request our HR director, Ina Ma'am uh, of SNU to please felicitate Ms. Paul for us. If you could please come up on this dais. I would request uh, Director Dr. Mondo to please also join Ms. Bose on the stage in felicitating Ms. Paul for us. A token of appreciation from the Inferno students, uh, the e-summit by the students. Uttorio. a memento and a sapling. <laughs> we would all, uh, of course, like to hear her speak today, ma'am. A very good afternoon to the lovely students of Netaji Shubhash Engineering College. Thank you so much to the Honorable Director, sir. It was lovely meeting Inadi after probably five years. Yes. Honorable professors and my lovely students. I think um, I'm here on the wrong day because my session was on the 12th. And uh, because it's Shamiji's birth anniversary on the 12th of Jan and I need to be present in my assembly. So I really wanted to meet you all. I landed up here today. I was hearing uh, from Director Sir that how wonderful you all are working and how creatively you all are doing the projects. It is actually amazing to, it was actually, I, I was, it was difficult for me to understand that how engineering students uh, are working in the fashion field. But, uh, your co-students and other seniors were explaining to me that how innovative projects you all are taking and you know working on and one of your ex-students have been working with some white coal sir which you said transformed jute into white coal 
So it's absolutely fantastic. My journey, in fact, my entire life has been very unplanned. I'm from Asansol, a small town. And uh, I wanted to be a doctor. My dad is a doctor. So I always dreamt of being a gynecologist. Sat for the joint entrance examination, sir. My name was in the waiting list. Probably I would have become a dentist or something. And I didn't want to be a dentist because that time it was not like today. You know, getting an appointment from the dentist or the fees that they charge is like spending a fortune. I uh, changed my focus. I did my graduation in botany from Asansol. And I thought of doing MBA. Because that time, you know, a lot of people, children were doing MBA. So I thought, let me do MBA. Though it was a very difficult time in my life, where I have always dreamt of being a doctor. And you know, that time, now, now things have changed. But when we were kids, it was only doctor, engineer, chartered accountant, and probably advocate. These are the four professions that you must follow. Otherwise, there is nothing in life. And it was a very difficult time that where I had dreamt of being a doctor, my dream of becoming a doctor got cancelled because my name was in the waiting list. My parents wanted me to be part of a private medical college, go to the south, we are spending money, get enrolled in a private medical college. But I thought, no, I would do something, maybe something different. And I did my graduation in botany, got chance in Jadavpur University, into the MBA stream. And while doing my MBA, I came across this advertisement that uh, one of my institutes from where I have done, Bilams, they were starting their fashion course. So MBA was a evening class. And that was the first time from Asansol I came to Calcutta. It was an evening class. I was in a paying guest. And in the morning, I didn't have much to do. So I came across this advertisement. I thought I would enroll myself because, you know, we girls, we women are always very much, uh, I will not say only girls nowadays, even boys, men are also very much fashionably inclined. So I got myself enrolled, got a chance. And I started studying MBA and designing together. I was not a very good student in fashion because in my family, my mother never encouraged fashion in those times. It's like, I don't know to do That was the kind, you know. We, usually what uh, in West Bengal, Bengali families we follow. So I wasn't a very good student, but I was a very hard working student. Because I didn't have anything to do in the morning, my fashion class used to start from 4 o'clock, end at 6. And my MBA class used to start from 6.30 to 9 in the evening. So entire morning, I used to sketch. And Bilans was a two-year diploma course. It is nothing compared to NIFT, what you have in the government college. It is nothing compared to that. NIFT is a five years course, extensive course. Entire night the library is open. So Billams is a part-time diploma course. And at the end of first year and when going to second year, one of the best boutiques and the only boutique that time in town, they came to take uh, induct their uh, in-house designer. So all of the students, they applied. It's for a job. But because I had my sketches ready, 
I wasn't supposed to do. But because I had time, I had my sketches ready, which is called portfolio. So when the owners of that boutique came a day after, I had this much of sketch ready. While my other friends, they probably managed to do maybe 10 sketches in one day's time. I got the job. And that was again a turning point where I was working as a designer, learning every time how to take measurements, how to give it for dye, how to deal with clients. So everything was a learning experience. I used to get 2,500 salary and 7% commission on the garments which got sold, designed by me. So during festive time, I used to manage around 10,000. And during summer season, which is the off season, I used to get something like 5,000, 4,000. But what I did was, I launched my label called Inga, which Madam said. Inga is the reverse of Agni. So I launched my label. We design collection, a collection on a topic, on a, um, on a theme. So maybe six pieces of a topic, of a theme. I went to Bhutan that time for a holiday. And I loved the nature, the women in Bhutan. How colorful, how hardworking. I bought some fabrics from there. And I designed a collection which I presented in the Lakme Fashion Week collection that year. And I named it Notes from Bhutan. And that six pieces collection or a 10 piece collection or a 15 piece collection was made from the salary I got. 10,000, 5,000, 4,000. This is how life started. Taking it one bit at a time. That time, Mr. Manish Malhotra was becoming famous. He, was, he started designing for movies. Raja Hindustani, Rangila, for Rumila Matonkar, for Karishma Kapoor. And I belong to a small town still a small town, but my dreams were very big. I thought, if Manish can do it, why not me? Even I want to design in Bollywood movies. And that time I got married. So I requested my doctor dad, daughter's best friend, always a daddy. So I asked Baba, can you come with me? want to go to Mumbai because my in-laws were very skeptical. Barir bo jache Mumbai te kach korte and you know how people look at film industry. I went to Mumbai. I didn't know anybody over there. And you know how competitive every, every stream is and especially Mumbai, Bollywood. I was there for almost seven days trying to look for some celebrity whom I can design for. And God is there. God gave me a chance to meet Sri Devi Kapoor. She was married that time to Boni Kapoor, second, uh, pregnant with a second child. She gave me an appointment of 10 minutes. I and my father, we, I went with a bag of samples. And there I was in Lokhandwala, in her apartment. She gave me a time of 10 minutes, but we ended up chatting probably after one hour. She loved my clothes and she said, Agni, you start designing for me. And then I will give you a chance to design in any of the Bollywood movies. Because they were doing a lot of movies that time, producing a lot of movies that time. I came back to Calcutta. I started designing for her. She loved my clothes. And one day I get a call from Sri Devi Kapoor Agni. Would you like to design for a film? I said, yes, Di, I would love to. He said, come down. We are launching Esha Diol, daughter of Hema Malini, in a film called Koi Mere Dil Se Puche. I want you to design some clothes for her. 
Manish is also there. So that was my first Bollywood stint where I designed a few clothes for Isha Diol. And after that, there was no end. I started designing for almost all celebrities in Tollywood, starting from Prashinji Chatterjee, Jeet, Quill, Shwastika Mukherjee, Mithun Chakraborty, in Bollywood, Manisha Goirala, Yami Gautam, Neha Dhupia, a lot of actors, KK Menon. I was doing this. I was pretty happy. I started doing my shows for a cause. I said, yes, I mean, I'm happy making clothes. People are coming, appreciating my creativity. A lot of publicity. But somehow, I felt something is missing. I want to do more for my people. So I said, I know only designing. What else can I do? So let me do all my shows will be for a cause. Whether it's for the trafficked victims, the trafficked girls who are being sold in Middle East and other countries and probably rescued sometimes, I'll work for them. I'll design for them. I will bring up that issue. I went to Bangladesh to do a show for the acid burned victims over there. Over there, a lot of domestic violence cases, you see people throwing acid on the girls. Acid cases, acid burned victims are a lot in Bangladesh. So I did a show over there. We did shows for the visually challenged children. We raised almost 7 lakhs to build a school for them. And things were going on fine. Again, I felt something more is to be done. So CII, Conglomeration of Indian Industries, they formed an organization called IWN, Indian Women Network, under CII. I was made the chairwoman, and we were asked to do a project. So we did a project for the tiger widows of Sundarban. You know, the tigers, the man-eaters, they eat up in many accidents which happen when the man of the house goes out for fishing or for collecting honey. They are killed. They are devoured by the man-eating tigers. So we did a show for the uh, tiger victims as well as a workshop to teach stitching to the, those tiger widows. Life was fine, but then again I thought I would like to do something more. And 2014, our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji came to power. And in 2019, I joined a particular party to work for the people of West Bengal. So right now, of course, designing is there, but along with designing, I am also politically working for a party. And always my focus is to work for the people of West Bengal, for the people of India. This is a short summary of my life till now. But I want, what I want to tell you Life has been very unplanned for me. But whatever I achieved, I'm very proud that I didn't have any godfather. What I did, I did it by myself. Nobody helped me. I did many wrong steps. I took many wrong steps. But I'm happy that I fell down, but I have the courage to get up and start walking again. Walk, 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 and stop not till you achieve the goal. Who said this? Swami Vivekananda. And also what I want to tell you, of course, 12th of January is Swamiji's birth anniversary. But what I feel is, of course, we have a career, we need to earn money, we need to earn fame. But never forget your country. Like you never forget your parents, your mother, 
your father go abroad work there but come back to your own country because india needs you india needs your brain india needs your work india needs your innovation india needs your creativity so come back and still i feel that at the end of the day how much big you are how much name you have how much fame you have how much money you have what thing matters the most is that you need to be a good human being a great human being and people will love you and people will respect you so i wish you all the best for you know the wonderful work that you all are doing i want to congratulate the uh, honorable teachers your faculty inadi of course and honorable director sir for being you know by them by the students and i can feel you know how how much they love you all and i feel so privileged to be part of your program today thank you so much thank you This is the committee of students for Inferno. A round of applause, please. Without them, this thing would not have been possible. And of course, fashion for a cause. She's undoubtedly changed the fashion scape for several women of Bengal, several youngsters who can dream of becoming fashion designers because of her, because she had taken the first step. because entrepreneurs and innovators and creators like her have taken the first step students now our next generation are being able to see a vision they can dream too they can they can think of creating fashion with a different sense thank you ma'am thank you for sharing your journey thank you for being here with us i would uh, now i think the students would show me off the stage because they have a debate that is uh, supposed to rage the stage at that moment i would hand over the microphone to rudro it's after all inferno it's a it's an e summit by the students for the students of the students rudro over to you okay thank you so very much ma'am so now is the event that we have the qualifiers for right now and we are going to have our debate competition that is express to impress we have our finalists we have the four people who will duke it out for the final prize but before that before getting into the details of the debate before yeah sir yes by all means
Uh, so without further delays, uh, we'll continue from where we left off. So here in Inferno, we have this thing where we have people come up and express their ideas. And what better way to express your ideas in a constructive manner than to have a debate? A battle of words to duke it out, as I was saying, and prove which among you have the best ideas that can actually win the hearts of people. But for that, for a debate, to make it successful, we need people to judge it as well. So we have, from our college and from outside as well, some very important people who will be judging this event. Chief among them, we have... Chief among them, we have Miss Ina Ma'am, Ina Bose Ma'am, who is the HR Director of Sister Nivedita University, Industry Connect and Corporate Communications. She is a veteran of PR performance, also worked in the government, public and private sectors, and has immense wealth of experience in all the fields that makes her a very, very talented person to judge an event such as this. But also other than that, we have, we have faculty members from our own college, Ms. Abhira Ma'am, Shwanta Sir, and Arnab Sir, to judge this event for us. And we also have all of our participants here. So first of all, can the participants please come up on stage? Oh, I can say. Thank you. Yes. And the judges, please, be seated at the front row. I believe all of you have your marking sheets, the scoring sheets. Uh, so first of all, let us talk a bit about the topic that we have. The motion in front of the house is that green energy initiative, while being good, is not relevant to the commoner, to the developing nations of today, and therefore not a profitable field for entrepreneurial growth. So we have our finalists. These are the four people. The debate format will be a two versus two, where the contestants will be judged individually, and we will have one winner who goes away with the cash prize at the end of the debate. Now, at first, we'll have one minute to one and a half minute for each of the contestants to give out their own introductions to their perception of what the topic is. You guys know the rules already to a certain degree, but I'll repeat it once again for the audience and for the general people to understand. Then what will happen is that once all of you have laid out your own ideas without getting into the whole debating part, we'll have the actual rebuttal phase. You guys will get at least 15 minutes to do the rebuttal phase amongst yourselves then we'll wrap it up in two to three minutes, and then we can have the question and answer session from the audience, the judges, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, so that is the format. Now for the teams, we have Divya Raj, Divya Raj is the first contestant, and Shomnath. Shomnath is the first uh, second contestant from for the first team. Then we have Aniket, Dev Raj, and they will be your second team. So what we will do is have them get seated, and you guys have already got the topic. So we'll do a coin toss to decide on who goes for the motion in front of the house and who goes against the motion in front of the house. So I'll ask my friend Rajvi to give me a coin, the trusty old coin. Now you do the coin toss. I'm really bad at tossing. Yeah, pehle bhi hua tha. Nah, they they pick something. In the air, pick karna hai. Okay. We need very good pictures. What do you guys choose? Do you want to go first? Uh, we'll go for. So we have them going for the motion in front of the house, and you guys will go against. Once again, you guys will get an individual amount of one and a half minute for both the people in the team to lay out your ground rules and ideas about the, uh, the entire topic at hand. Then you guys get the rebuttal round. You guys can duke it out amongst yourselves. So we'll give you like one minute to get seated, get comfortable. And one more thing, no more mobile phones or any other media during the debate. OK? Sounds fair? We'll get started now. OK? So best of luck to both the teams. And can we have a huge round of applause for all the contestants? I uh, will give you papers and pens and everything. Just get seated for now.
perfect. Okay, so the first one minute or so will start now. We'll give you your sheets and everything, then we'll get started with the actual thing as discussed. So once again, good luck to both the teams. And you give me papers and pens.
Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. I am Devraj Majumdar. Uh, I am from third year CAC. And uh, today, we all are here for, for a debate. And the topic is green energy is not a good alternative for the commoner in the developing countries. And henceforth is not a very profitable uh, source of earning for the entrepreneurs. So for this, uh, we are speaking for the motion. And I would like to tell that, uh, yeah, it is actually not a good alternative for the commoners and also uh, not a good, um, you know, profit earning source for the entrepreneurs. Yeah, because the infrastructure uh, that is actually, uh, for at first, the initial cost, the infrastructural cost and it is, it is too high, it is actually very high. The high risk of lithium ion mining that is done in uh, Taiwan and Myanmar is basically like, very brutal in their places. Uh, we can also see Mafia Raj there. And basically the developing country, uh, the developed countries like China and many other countries have proper eye on these countries to take just the tech control and like colonize them. This might also uh, in future like lead to world war as well. And uh, the materials that are required for making the batteries or making this solar panels and everything, the total waste is very high. We can also uh, like make out uh, almost 78% of the materials that are used are actually in waste while it is in yeah while it is in making it is not a very reliable source for uh, our commoners and it's very high cost and i would just like to end it yeah thank you Everything we create pollutes. The idea is to create stuff in such a way that it lasts for as long as it particularly can. Any product that human beings ever created creates pollution. These, I should start again, I didn't introduce myself. Okay. Good afternoon everyone. I'm Devaraj from CSBS department first year and today I stand against the motion that is the green energy initiative while being good is not relevant to the commoner in the developing nations today. Everything we create pollutes. The idea is to produce things in such a way that it lasts for as long as it particularly can. Green energy initiatives are good but at what cost? At the cost of the commoner? The energy demands of a developing nation is way less than what it is for a developed nation. The idea is, the developed nation have a very high per capita income. Let me give you a very good example. Europe has a six, Europe has a $60,000 per year average per capita income. What that means is, an average man in an year, in living in Europe, is earning $60,000 while that a man living in India is doing a mere minimum of $2,000 per year. How come a person who is earning so less afford clean energy, renewable energy costs? Whenever you are installing solar panels, who is going to give the money for solar panels? The idea is that it is going to cost, but we as a developing nation cannot just say that we are not going to take care of it. India will be a developed nation. It is not my belief, but this is 
But this is what is to, but this is statistically proven. We need to take steps from the very first day. We need to do it in such a manner that we strengthen the common man of India in such a manner that we increase the per capita income of the people living in the country. We have to develop industries in such a manner that it is sustainable and we can go forward with it. We have to be the change we want to see. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Aniket Nandi and the motion of the house is the green energy initiative while being good is not relevant to the commoner in the developing nations and we are going for the motion. The main concept of keeping energy cheap is supplying it on demand. We don't store energy in our power plants and that's why we can avail the energy at what cost it comes to. The main problem with green energy is we have to store it because it's not reliable. It's not always there. Wind energy, it might not be there all the time. There are wind gusts, there are air currents, but it's not constant. Solar power, it's there for 12 hours a day and in most cases, it not, it's not even 12 hours in full potential. Water energy, it depends on currents, it depends on season and it depends on how you need to channelize that water because we don't only use water for energy, we also use it for irrigation. So energy which is green or comes from our earth is not completely reliable. So the main challenge of harnessing that energy is while we are able to extract it, we need to store it. And there comes the biggest problem for a developing nation. We cannot afford a Tesla in India. Why? Because it's too costly. Why is it costly? Because it comes with a very large lithium ion battery which costs a huge amount of money. Even though mining of it is necessarily cheap. The conditions in uh, lithium ion mining uh, sites are very brutal and uh, still the battery at the end of the day is very costly. So the, one of the main issues of storing uh, Green energy is the cost factor. While there are other things uh, like infrastructure and setting up and uh, not every country having equal access to equal natural resources, the main issue of harnessing or using green energy for a developing nation is the cost related to its setting up and storage. Thank you. Good morning, judges. I will be speaking against the motion. So, uh, my name is Somnath and I'm from CSBS department. Uh, in 2022, the sector prepares to leave forward and work according to the landscape and charting out the path ahead. Reforming have been going for over a decade and we have seen a lot of changes the renewable sources have been doubled and 100 gigawatts uh, of uh, work has been stored. As my friend said uh, uh, earlier, that it's a form of storage energy and it's not always usable as wind is not always there and water is not always there. Uh, due to usage of non-environmental uh, non friendly resources, we have changed the harmony of the environment which led to these changes. Now we are not getting water in proper format, in proper seasons, because we are the ones who have hampered the environment, have hampered the equilibrium of the environment. This Independence Day, according to SDG Goal 7, we ensure affordable, reliable, and sustainable of modern energy for all. This is the initiative taken by all the developing nations throughout the world. A very popular example, a very small district in Jharkhand named Gomla have been installed social, have installed social, uh, so, uh, social and solar panels in each houses. Now, solar panels were uh, very expensive when used uh, with silicon based tech, but nowadays, uh, due to uh, modernization of technology, the cost has been reduced below 50%. And hence, it's a great platform for entrepreneurs to invest in the developing nations. Thank you. We are the champions of change. So now we'll begin the rebuttal round where each of them will get a chance to rebut each other. 
and uh, we'll begin with the okay we'll begin with the side which is against the motion my question to you will be my friend agreed that green energy initiatives are very expensive they are even detrimental to the commoners of the developing nations but does that mean that we should not try and leave the things as they are how are we going to you know if we become a developing nation what about the things we did in the past like the european countries they developed on the backbone of industrial revolution and now they are being hypocritical and telling developing countries such as india and china that you shouldn't pollute now because you shouldn't that's a bad thing to do but what they were doing a century ago they forgot about it are we going to be like them we are a developing nation we don't have money agreed 2000 dollar per year very less but what are we going to do about it are we going to be lethargic about it are we going to leave it the way it is what is the way forward my friend please let me know that the only way forward from right here is uh, like you said uh, the european nations have uh, done a huge amount of pollution back when the industrialization initially happened uh, along with us and all those countries which have very conveniently now shifted their uh, uh, production bases to india and china and now asking us to reduce our carbon footprints but if you come out and say that you did that back then so we have the right to do that right now that cannot be said right i mean no one was there to uh, point a finger towards them because they were a superpower back then they are still a superpower right now but we with our consciousness cannot go through the same steps as they did just to make our country better because in a whole we belong to a planet which will be ruined so coming to that point if you want to use green energy i am not against green energy i am against the concept of making it the sole uh, energy source for a developing nation because like i said we cannot store green energy cheaply so if there are technologies in future where we can store energy on a very minimal rate where it will be guaranteed that there will be no quote unquote oil wars like wind wars in in uh, later time then obviously we can shift to green energy but not at this point where it's still developing people don't know much how to harness this in a cheap manner as fossil fuels like even 50 years back we didn't know how to properly uh, filter or refine crude oil which is basically a form of fossil fuel but now we are developing a huge uh, range of fuels and products which are being used in different things from the uh, same component like that maybe in 50 years if there are cheaper ways to store green energy or to harvest green energy then obviously it will be uh, uh, very much usable for any developing nation or we can always go nuclear which no one wants to go because of one incident agreed India has been one of those countries that is leading in terms of solar panels. The thing is, we are creating, we are creating renewable energy development goals are being pushed forward by all the countries, the developing countries, developed countries such as France. They they set up a bar for 2030 that by 2030, every car that you will be seeing in France is going to be a Tesla or something like that. It's going to be completely electric, but what it is now they are just pushing it forward they are pushing the boundary to 2040 2050 2070 our prime minister this year when he went to the united nations he spoke in the general assembly and said we are going to put the target to 2070 we are a developing nation and we are going to change everything and it's a very good thing we are leading in the, in terms of the number of solar panels and the gigawatts of energy that we are making we are making an international alliance for that my friend we are going to make so much of energy the the electric the sun the so the electricity based on solar panels that we are thinking of transporting or giving it out to the our neighboring nations making give, giving it to africa and stuff like that we are a developing nation and this is what we can do with such a low income in such a low income country we can make things like that we can create a difference it's about the your values, that is what it is. Uh, talking about the storage, you said it's not very much uh, pocket friendly to store green energy. Uh, just to know we have st store any energy. Just to know, 
it works have been going over a decade and we stored more than 100 gigawatts of energy now that's a huge amount if you'll agree the second thing uh, this independence day we ensured that we will be uh, storing and using green energy which is reliable affordable and consumable to the audiences now talking about tesla you said it's very expensive uh, with increase of demand with increase of more people the prices will go down as you know and uh, talking about uh, the other sources of energy you, you said the european nations are pushing ourselves to 2030 2040 uh, we as a developing nations has to take care of all that because uh, we can't let our uh, nature ruin and we cannot use fossil fuels because it's going to end one day there's a reason saudi is promoting tourism because it's notes by 2050 the oils will be gone and uh, the fourth thing which i want to end before i pass you the mic that it's we who use green energy and make it cheaper the more the masses will be involved in it the more the investors will be involved in it and it will bring the prices down it's we who can change it okay coming to uh, the vs point first yeah we are making huge amount of solar panels we are mainly exporting them to developed nations so again they are just shifting their production uh, basis to India rather than their own countries because the toxic waste that comes out of the production process let it rot in the developing nation who will care again uh, yes we are going forward uh, and developing huge amount of power from uh, green sources but on the other hand we are also increasing our dependence on coal based energy much more than that because every day well uh, under this uh, the present government all of india has been electrified so that requires a huge amount of energy to 1.3 billion people comparing that to europe will never work comparing the geo uh, geographical or geopolitical situation of india to europe or usa will never work the density of us is very low so it's very easier for them to install wind farms to install other ways through which they can harness energy easily also like uh, divya said while he was introducing the topic that uh, the per capita income is the biggest factor here again for setting up energies also like my friend was saying that uh, we are storing uh, uh, how much gigawatt did you say? 100 gigawatts. But what was the cost per unit for that kind of storage? Uh, in India, yeah, in India, we all know uh, the major two companies who are actually investing in this green energy purpose is one Tata Green Energy and is one is Adani Green Energy. Yeah, but. <laughs> The thing we should at first like, keep in mind is we are actually exporting our green energy to Africa and in many places uh, we are also like using it in, in India. But the transportation cost is very, very high. The amount that we are using in storing is much more higher than the transportation cost. We have to keep all this in mind. Uh, for now, the commoners who are using it, it is like almost very, very impossible task for them at this point to catch up to the cost. Because yeah, as he said, it's just 200 rupees per year. Yeah, 2000 rupees per year. Yeah. I'll just give you a small analogy here. Uh, like four, five years back, we used to spend 200 rupees for one GB in one month, right? But now we are getting 6 GB and then 61. Why? Because of increase, increase of mobile phones and increase of internet users. The same thing happens here. 10 years ago, when we started this green energy, uh, th uh, the green energy movement, uh, it was costly. But if you look now, the prices have been reduced, like including the transportation, because of bulk, uh, bulk orders and bulk uh, transport things. The cost has been is, uh, issued and as i again said the more the number of users get into it the more the, the more the people get into it the cost will come down commoners in india can't afford high fuel prices fuel drives industries industries create jobs and jobs creates livelihood agreed just saying that the green energy initiative is detrimental to developing nation and moreover to its commoners is not going to solve anything 
See, these developed nations, carbon emission by the developed countries are way more than the developing countries. Why so? When they have developed on the backbone of industrial revolution, they have created so much of pollution and now they are developed. They are being superpowered, they have lots of lots of money. Why are they the biggest consumer of energy? Because they want to maintain their high living standards. The people that these countries have are way less to ours. The entire population of the Europe, which has 27 countries and more, is 80 crores. And what we have here is 140 crores. We consume way less energy than the Europe does. Just saying that the detriment, it is detrimental to the commoners, so we are not going to work upon it, is not going to solve the problem. The only solution that I see to this thing is that we need to strengthen the commoners. We need to create industries. We need to work upon the coal. That is the cheapest source of energy. We have to provide jobs. And once the common man of India is as strengthened as the European or the US markets, that is when we can actually move to renewable energy sources. And the steps taken by the government is really, really commendable. Why so? Because we have a very small economy of only $3.5 trillion. But still, big countries such as US having a you know $21 trillion economy is doing way worse than we are when it comes to carbon emission footprints. The US, no matter how much noble they be, they are the number one emitters when it comes to carbon footprints. Nothing is going to be solved by having lots of money. It's going to take the values that we have inculcated within us and we are on the right path. Just before you mentioned the Tata thing, uh, I'm from Jamshedpur. Yeah, I'm from Jamshedpur and uh, the major steel extraction was done from coal all these years. But now Tata has uh, installed plants in New Zealand which will be working in 2050 I guess, which uh, will extract iron and steel by using nuclear reactors. Now, if you say nuclear reactors can be harmful for the environment, I'll agree to that. Yes, it is harmful, but due to the advancement of technologies, uh, we can control the you know, uh, reactions involved and uh, the emissions getting out of the nuclear reactors. Huh? What? I'm obviously, nuclear is not free. It's very costly and very effective. Huh? Huh? I'm not saying, I'm, not, I'm just saying that. Uh, the uh, huh. the nuclear is not green and hence they are making changes but that's not the green thing but uh, as he said we need to have more industries and more uh, installations according to the people we need to empower the people so that they can also think to store green energy in a cheaper way i just gave an example of how the thing works okay so, in total right Okay, uh, what Divya said, again, uh, uh, he is constantly talking about how we need to develop the technology, how we need to cost cut in future, how we need to research. Uh, I'll agree completely to that. We need to do that because the topic of the debate was today. And I'm again saying that today, right now, or at this moment, it's not relevant to a commoner because of the sheer cost it takes to store or harness energy. That is the first thing. The second thing is all the projects you have talked about here in India or uh, some developing nation have all been undertaken by big corporations or the government. There will not be a single case where a middle class person has been able to convert his house completely to green energy usage. But there are thousands of cases like that in developed nations because they can just afford it like Divya said initially in his introduction speech. So that is the fault, that is the flaw we have in a developing nation where a person is not capable enough to go into green energy. I understand that green energy or nuclear energy are, will be the only future energies left in like 50 or 100 years. At max it can be 100 years. But as of now, it's not at all possible or not at all relevant for a common person from a very developing nation or developing nation to access or use it in his home uh, for that. But yeah, he or she can use it as a backup source. But that will be like using an inverter. Uh, as of 
Yeah. As of today, Tata and many other companies like uh, Adani, we all can see in the Sensex and Nifty, it's actually the bullish bubble that's happening. Uh, in last, yeah, in last one or two years, the solar or this green energy sector has increased more than 300 percent. But if we just see and analyze their uh, growth stage or their uh, profitable stage, they have not been profitable for many, many quarters. Okay, and this is a very, very big bullish bubble. And what will we do, the commoners do, when this bubble burst? Like uh, in uh, past uh, four or five years, like in the past, we have seen Geo or Reliance came up with this brand new and like big and grand idea of Geo, where they are giving very, very uh, low rate, cheap rate internet. Like in this, yeah, yeah, yeah. in India, if there is no country that, uh, if there is no c company that came uh, come up and just build EV like Maruti that did with the pricing, if Tata, Adani, or any companies that's investing in India, like General Motors, General Motors, Volkswagen, they are all collaborating with Tata and Mahindra to build huge EVs, like. And uh, like, if Maruti that collaborated with Suzuki, they gave us this Maruti Suzuki van. We all know this. It's a very very cheap rate. If these companies don't at this point of time, they don't give us the pricing in this stage, we all can't just uh, afford it. Okay, just one point to add. Whatever EVs you buy in whichever country you are buying, at the end of the day, you are charging it through coal power. I would just want you to know is renewable energy doesn't stop pollution. It just changes the place where it pollutes. Lithium ion energy, you know, lithium ion batteries are required for it. Where are its biggest reserves? Africa. Initially, US was polluting its own country. Now, it's going to pollute Africa to mine out the lithium ion batteries. And now it's going to use it. The US now is not polluted, but the Africa is being done. The world in total is getting polluted and that makes no difference at all. But one thing is, once you install things like solar panels, your electricity bills get zero. In a similar manner, you need to develop technologies that are cheap as well as affordable to the commoners so that we don't have a destroyed world in the future. We need to do it in such a manner that we don't destroy the livelihoods of the people. At the same time, we don't cost the world as a whole. Thank you. Uh, we have been using green energy before the tech came into our lives. We used cow dungs, we used water turbines to produce things. Uh, just because the efficiency was low, we stopped using the green energy uh, products and started on the tech thing. But once, if you uh, look on the scalability of the matter, as the masses go into it, the green energy is going to be cheap and uh, for the developing nations too, and entrepreneurs can invest in this. Thank you. Okay, the debate has ended. Uh, I am going to come to the judges panel to uh, ask if any of you have any questions for either of the sides. And after that, uh, since you guys were the last to speak, one of you can sum up the entire debate. All right? Yeah. Do you have any questions? All right. Okay. Do you like to sum up the entire topic? So the motion of the house was the green energy initiative while being good is not relevant to the commoner in developing nations today. And uh, they went against the motion, we went for the motion. Our main problems with uh, green energy being not relevant to a commoner in developing nation where infrastructure cost being very high, not being very reliable, storage being an, uh, a very difficult cost factor for a common person and a few other minor details like mining of storage materials and only big players playing in the field. Their uh, uh, main points were how green energy is only the future 
uh, dependency we can have in energy and we need to uh, go to a level where it will be affordable for people and we we cannot just stop thinking about it just because it's not affordable right now we need to work on it on a daily basis we need to do researches we need to develop things uh, so that it can uh, be brought into huge demand so that the cost come low and it does not matter whether a person is from a developing country or not everyone can access it thank you We'll give the judges some time to come uh, to the decision of a conclusive winner. And uh, uh, after that, we have our panel discussion. So we request all of you to stay in the APC hall for the upcoming event. Thank you. And you all can take your seats. We'll give the judges time to tally the marks and uh, the volunteers to finally calculate and give us winners. But in the meantime, we'll set up the stage for the panel discussion. The next um, panel should be very interesting again. It is um, latest market trends in social entrepreneurship. Am I right? Um, and we have our esteemed panelists here. Uh, Mr. Of course, um, Mr. Koshik Bhattacharya. He is, of course, a renowned speaker and a startup mentor. And um, I can go on on and about him, but it's better if Rudra introduces him. That's his job role today. And um, of course, it's always a pleasure learning things from Mr. Koshik Bhattacharya. I've always been an avid follower of his work. Uh, Mr. Nabarun Bhattacharya. Director, School of Information Science and Technology, and uh, okay, and of course, Professor Shubhabrata Bhattacharjo, and a manager of National Entrepreneurship Network, uh, senior program, and uh, yes, and of course, we have Mr. Rondo Bandhapadha also. Uh, well, the, uh, you know, the intro for the panelists will be given by our very own Rudra. Come on. Aja, before we get started with that, uh, just give us a few moments, we'll set up the panel and once again we'll ask the students to, guys, at the back, just settle down and get people to join in. We'll take a couple of minutes to set up the panel, then we'll get started, okay?
I would request the panelists to please come up on stage, Mr. Kaushik Bhattacharya, the moderator of the session, Mr. Navarun Bhattacharya, Mr. Arnab Bandupadha and Shubhabrutha Bhattacharya. To please come up on stage, we would take the opportunity to felicitate our panelists for today. The NSEC IIC convener, Mr. Uh, Professor Shilpi Bobs, he will be felicitating our panelists. In the meantime, I would uh, request Rudra to read out our, uh, the introductions for our panelists. Thank you so very much, ma'am. So once again, thank you to all the people here for being here today, especially a huge round of thanks to Mr. Koshik Bhattacharya, Mr. Navarun Bhattacharya, Mr. Shubhavrata Bhattacharya, and of course, Mr. Arnab Bandhapaddai for being here today and making this final panel discussion of the day, the first day of Inferno possible. So while we are doing the felicitation, the first thing we would like to do is to introduce the panelists that we have in front of you for today for this panel discussion. Needless to say, the topic for this panel discussion is the latest market trends in social entrepreneurship. Now this is a topic that might not be familiar to a lot of you people, but this is a topic that is deeply embedded with trends and things that are really important in entrepreneurship. So without further delay, the first panelist of today we have mr kaushik bhattacharya who will be our moderator as, moderator as well for this uh, panel discussion so with 23 years of experience in id business consulting and management he's an expert in sales business development account management digital marketing brand promotion people management operations team leadership along with organizational effectiveness and technical know-how he is the ex vice president of dataco india his ex-country head and altering solutions of Private Limited, India Private Limited. Thank you so very much, sir, for being here today and being the moderator of this panel. Now, second, we have Mr. Nobarun Bhattacharya. He is the current director of School of Information Science and Technology, Macau. He was also the former director and center head of CDAC, Kolkata, and Patna. Thank you so very much, sir, for being here today. Now, third, we have Mr. Arnab Bandapaddai from our very own college, as well as an entrepreneur. He is the founder of Optrack Creations and he is an expert at entrepreneurship programs and teaching and mentoring people. Thank you so very much for being here. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. And last but not the least, we have Mr. Shubhaprata Bhattacharji. He is the senior program manager at National Entrepreneurship Network. He is an inclusive management and achievement oriented professional with over 24 years of rich and diverse experience in various functions such as training and development, entrepreneurship, education, incubation management, teaching and administration, sales and marketing across education domain. Initial seven years with uh, Aptech Computer Education and later two years with Alice Univert classes designated as business development manager and rest five years work with Z Networks Education Group. Thank you, sir, so very much. And as well as that, he's presently working as a senior manager, as mentioned, with the National Entrepreneurship Management uh, Network. Also, Vadwani Foundation Initiative registered in the USA with Dr. Ramesh Vadwani as his chairman. Thank you, all of you. Thank you once again for being here today. I would ask Mr. Kaushik Bhattacharya to take over the reins for here. And once again, thank you to the people in the audience, the co-members and everyone else for making this possible. And now we will get this panel discussion started. Thank you. Thank you also very much. Thank you, Rudra. Uh, it's a pleasure coming back to your institution time and again. You've been great in inviting, you know, uh, lesser mortals like me every time. So thank you very much. It's probably the, including physical and virtual, probably the fifth time that I'm with you. And today, we are going to discuss on a topic which is extremely relevant. And at the same time, I have a very, very you know, distinguished panel with me. So, uh, my students, student friends, please don't miss 
the learned people what they say about today's topic. So while I set the context, uh, we all talk about entrepreneurship, we know about it, but what is social entrepreneurship? Social entrepreneurship, just to set the context, is a venture, is an entrepreneurship which is inclusive, which fulfills the demands of the society's need and in a way create inclusiveness and scope for marginalized or you know a lot of uh, typical demand from corners of the society and it is addressed through the through a venture so what are the essentials uh, essential elements of a uh, social entrepreneurship you know it should be replicable it should be you know addressing a particular need of the society through a business sometime social entrepreneurship social businesses are uh, n not for profit sometimes not always and uh, you know so these are post covid or during covid in you know i am a startup india registered mentor i go to different cities of india in judging uh, startups i have seen post covid sir uh, social entrepreneurship has suddenly increased. There are many young people who are doing, uh, you know, medical uh, vitals checking over net. I have seen uh, in Jammu, one person has developed a chair which moves, uh, you know, in mind power. Okay, and that was for uh, physically challenged people. Uh, while I was uh, jury at a Thai event, I have seen, you know, meramazdur.com. They are collecting uh, every, you know, at Goria Mor, at Shambhajar Mor, you will find at early morning, there are different mysteries. They sit there with an expectation of work and contractors come and they pick them up. So, <clears throat> if contractors uh, are looking for a particular skill set, and, and that skill set is not present in Shambhajar, maybe present at Ultadanga, he is not going to know. So there is a portal which lets the contractor know wh which part of the city he will get which skill amongst the mysteries. And mysteries are registered through their Aadhaar card and all. Payment is also online. So no contractor can actually, you know, run away without paying. So there are many such uh, ventures coming up nowadays which has got a social, social impact which is helping the society as such. And post-COVID, this has increased many folds. So if I, if I you know, start with my friend Ornob, uh, you know, you are actually involved with a lot of students, you are seeing them, you are mentoring them. So what do you actually think, you know, through some live examples, if you just can, you know, tell everybody what kind of ventures you are seeing in social entrepreneurship, and what are the essential essential elements that you think is very necessary? Is is also innovation one of them? Like I leave it to you if you can put some light there. Hi, uh, good evening, everybody. So yeah, uh, first thing is uh, let's understand the concept of social entrepreneurship. Okay, uh, we have a myth that social entrepreneurship means CSR, charity. It's not that. If I'm talking of entrepreneurship, I mean business, I mean revenue, I mean profit, okay? So one of the key elements of social entrepreneurship is I will serve the society, I will give them convenience, okay? Customer, customer is anybody? King, king God, okay? We have made them king, okay? Customer is one of the subset of the most lazy people on earth. They want convenience, right? Ten years back, I have to go down, go to the place, wait for a Kalipili taxi, okay? Bear the tantrums, nahi jayenge, wahan nahi jayenge, wahan nahi jayenge. Then, if I'm lucky enough, I will board one of them. Today, I have Uber, I have Ola. Convenience, giving me convenience, right? Big basket. Okay, I'm sure you order, all of you order from Big Basket, right? Uh, now, COVID is over, lockdown is over, still I don't feel the urge of going into the market, okay, and bring things for me, right? So these are 
be examples of social entrepreneurship. Okay? Of course, when we talk of entrepreneurship, we say green, energy, those all are part. Okay? Okay. Uh, how many of you have seen the film Padman? All of you. Okay? Another example of social entrepreneurship. Okay? I'm solving a problem. I'm solving a problem which is there in the society. And I'm not doing charity. I'm charging. I'm making profit. Okay? And so the product is an example of the social entrepreneurship. The film is also an example of social entrepreneurship. Okay? Akshay Kumar did not do it for free. Okay? He charged his 100 crores, whatever his revenue is. Okay? To make a film, be a part of a film like that. Right? So these are certain examples of social entrepreneurship which I feel you, know, you can think of. Excellent example. We all relate to movies so easily and we have in front of us one of our childhood icons sitting. So, uh, so movie is, you know, very well connected to, you know, directly connects. So, Arnav has given a wonderful example. Uh, we have someone who has got long experience in technology and he once represented government of India's an R&D oriented, scientist based technology organization. So, Navarun said, if I may come to you, uh, since you represent technology background and you have seen the world, you have seen many startups and many enterprises, do you also, do you think in social enterprise uh, and uh, innovation and technologies are also very important part and parcel or how do you see? Is our innovations are increasing in today's youngsters? So, if you... Now, first, uh, first of all, good afternoon to all. Uh, nice to see a lot of people at this fag end of uh, this day, around five. So, the topic of social entrepreneurship, the entire thing social as well as entrepreneurship, both the terms are there in this entire theme of discussion today. We must understand, as he already told, that social entrepreneurship will is essentially an entrepreneurship. And what is an entrepreneurship? We must try to understand. To me, entrepreneurship is to take initiative in any job. Those who are in an organization also. Suppose one of you joins some uh, software company. If you take your own initiatives there, to make a change in your ecosystem, you are an entrepreneur. You are also an entrepreneur. So, those who can take initiatives and directly social entrepreneurship will target the societal benefits. And we are all Indians and we are in Indian society. And I am uh, very emphatically, I would like to highlight that in India, social entrepreneurship should be focused more than business entrepreneurship because our social domains, starting from agriculture, you know, every farmer is an entrepreneur, end to end business he does. Our health sector, our education sector, people from other countries are coming and doing business in these sectors. So that can be replaced only with social entrepreneurship kind of initiatives. I'll uh, tell you and that can only be done, that can only be done if we harness the strength of technology there. Luckily, India is a superpower in information science and technology. You agree, you don't agree, but world agrees that India is a superpower. And we have technologies like, you all know that IOTs, artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, then big data analytics and of course 5G also is knocking at your door. 
So, we have to appropriately harness the strengths of this technology, leverage the strength of these technologies to really make difference in our societal sectors. And two major societal sectors, which are really niche in terms of technology infusion, in terms of innovative interventions, are agriculture and related environment. And Indian agriculture, you know, uh, it provides livelihood to 59% uh, of our populace. But in terms of GDP, their contribution is about 15% of the national GDP contribution. So there is a huge gap. And entrepreneurs, innovators, creative minds like you who are here and I, uh, this program is called Inferno. So in our days, we, there was a movie called Towering Inferno. And there, one big tower caught fire. And there was efforts to extinguish that fire by a helicopter and that helicopter exploded. And that was uh, the scene that when the helicopter goes to extinguish that fire that explodes. So you are like flying helicopters with lot of creativity. Your creativity should explode with the power of the inferno with social entrepreneurship related initiatives. And there are a lot of areas in agriculture environment right from information dissemination to quantification of quality of agri producers. There are food safety. Now food security is ensured for all of us. We know we get rice in the ration, but food safety is not ensured in our country. There are a lot of pesticide residues, antibiotic residues, or what, and the environment sector, or soil is polluted. Water under the soil is polluted. Our air is polluted. So a lot of interventions of technology possible with the emerging trends in uh, the technologies that I named a few. And of course, with the proliferation of social media, uh, definitely many wonders can be done by social entrepreneurship for India. It's specially relevant for India. And please remember, no American will come and solve Indian problems. We have to, we Indians, have to solve our Indian problems. And you are the budding youths with all creativity, all innovation, who can make all the difference. Thank you very much. Excellently said, excellently said. Sir, before I come to you, Shuvarutha, sir, I cannot resist myself, you know, citing one example. Uh, as you said, 5G. Uh, 5G is introduced in Indore and some of the other towns. Gradually, it is rolling out. And when, once we have uh, 5G, IoT would be a reality because we can allocate IP address to any gadget. So there would be a lot of, you know, data. And Web 3.0 is coming and it will be on distributed technology like blockchain. So there are different artifacts and there are different uh, digital art which can be traded over uh, Web 3.0 under blockchain technology and NFT is going to be a reality, non-fungible tokens. So in a short, there are many artisans who are, you know, uh, at, the, at the corner of the society, their paintings, their artwork will get converted into digital and it will be traded globally through NFT on blockchain and these people who are marginalized because in Purulia, in different districts of Orissa and all, this artwork, they cannot trade it globally. So there would be a new horizon opening through technology so that they are also empowered. So sir, I come to you and would really like to know for the benefits of our audience who are mainly students, when they, you know, become entrepreneur and if they choose social uh, entrepreneurship, what are the things they should actually remember? What are the skills they should have? And how exactly they should, when they pursue, what are the things they should remember? 
Good evening, all of you. Good evening. Thank you. So, a uh, very interesting topic today. And uh, as uh, you have heard a lot of good, good things, but couple of very interesting things I would like to share with you because I also cannot resist myself with a lot of examples, but time is short. So, I will cut short uh, uh, the entire thing. Uh, how many of you are fond of milk? How many of you are fond of milk? Everyone. Now, good quality milk. Good milk. Pure milk. All. Na? Yes or no? Now, say for example, uh, every morning, if you get a bottle of or a pack of fresh milk with a testing kit, that whether the milk is pure or not, what do you feel about that company? Huh? Secured. Secured, isn't it? Trusted. Why I told all these things? Because from the panel, if you have heard correctly, food and agri sector is a booming sector. Okay, and which is doing lot of good work, lot of innovation in day to day's life. And these type of ventures, social ventures are coming from whom? Any guess? Which students? I mean, very cream students from NITs, IITs and all. Fine? So, it doesn't mean that you have to be a technology prone, you have to have a big farm, etc, etc. Small, small thing you can do. Now, let me come to the topic. So, uh, I, I see social entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship in, from a different uh, angle. Like, I believe that entrepreneurs, they are the entrepreneurs who does a lot of changes in the society. They can be remembered as an entrepreneur. Now, the second part is, uh, if we look any entrepreneur's journey, definitely they are solving some problem. So, as a student, the first and foremost step is identify a real problem of the society. And for that, you need to do a big survey, at least 500 to 1000 samples. Once the survey is done properly, then you can analyze the result that what type of result you are getting, what type of response you are getting. It's a good, bad, host. According to them, maybe you can start little bit working that how to solve the problem and how the people are addressing the problem right at this moment. And slowly, slowly, you come to a part where we cannot say it's a MVP or a prototype, but it's a working model sort of a thing with which you can approach to your customers again and you can ask that you said this, this is the prototype or this is the working model, this may be the price, are you going to pay for it? Take a second round of survey. If that is positive, then one by one steps you can follow, say for example, uh, unique value you can add, you can add uh, proper pricing, you can add channels for marketing, you can add go to M strategy, etc. Lot many things are done. But first and foremost, you need to conduct a good survey which will uh, strengthen the backbone of the entire journey. Otherwise, in India, you all know that majority of the startup failures. Because we as a startup think that, yes, this is a very good thing, but ultimately, customer do not need that. So, there is no, I mean, making that sort of product or service. So, as a student, my request, as you are all maybe first year or second semester, I don't know, first year, I think. No, all years. Okay, all years are there, fine. So, first and foremost is, go to the market, do, try hard, that what is the problem. Find out the societal problem and try to work on it. That's the only suggestion from my end. Thank you. Whatever, what you have said, sir, is actually a reality. And if we cannot match our product and services with what customer needs, then we would definitely fail. And that is the recipe of success. So I think, you know, the main attraction, see, Datto sir is, is, was sitting, just uh, went outside. We, this panel should not actually take much of time or nope. Before I wrap up, we had a debate, you know, before our panel. And they were all discussing about uh, renewable energy, green energy and all. Uh, India imports crude oil of more than 200 billion dollars per year. And for a country like India, where foreign exchange goes 
to drain in importing crude oil, green energy, you know, foreign dependency, and because of that, India's diplomacy, foreign policy, everything, you know, orients beyond, you know, around that. So green energy is a social entrepreneurship. Any business around solar and all, it solves not only global problem, pollution and all, it helps also India, strengthening India in its foreign policy. So that is also a social uh, entrepreneurship. So social entrepreneurship today is extremely necessary. You can earn profit, but also you help society, nation and the globe uh, as a whole. So many, many thanks to all these learned people be beside me. And I think, you know, they all have enlightened us the importance and how exactly we should do it. My thanks to my fellow panelists, Shobhrata sir, Nabarun sir and Arnob. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you for listening to us. Thank you very much, guys. First of all, thank you all of you once again so very much for being here. And before we move on to the second event, I would just like to say something else. When we talk about entrepreneurship, innovation and all of that, that all stems from something very personal and something very close to us. You know, growing up you see people who are doing things, reaching places. And it's all about inspiration. When you talk about social entrepreneurship, I feel like a very key and tangible part of that is the inspiration element. You see people, you see people achieving, and you want to do things. That is change, that is entrepreneurship. Making that change a reality, building something, doing something, making sure that all the people that live around you learn something, know something, get better, the society as a whole gets better. And these people gathered here today, the people in the front rows, all of you, once again, thank you so very much for coming here, taking time out of your busy schedules to share your opinions, your experiences, and talk about all of this. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. Guys, please don't leave. Rajbir, I request you to please man the gates. How can you leave, guys? We have a very special address now. All of us are sitting here. See, all the front rows are filled right now. Settle down. We have a lot of food remaining, a lot of the noise remaining. Settle down, people. Can we have the slide, please, for our next guest speaker for today? I'm waiting for uh, Mr. Chatterjee to come back. No, he's in
um, remove the thing. Remove the paper from the table. We'll take a few minutes because uh, our guest speaker is outside probably, you know. We'll have him in a minute and we'll not start the next session in a while. I can't see him. Where is he? He's not here in the hall. Good good time. Where did you go then? Yeah. Well, our next guest speaker for today is Mr. Shiddhato Chatterjee. He is a business analyst, stock analyst, and um, he is, an, of course, an industry veteran in the profile for, give him a chair, guys. We have to rearrange uh, Mr. Uh, sorry, John a chair. You have to place it in. And um, can we switch off the projector, please? Can we please switch off the projector? Okay. With uh, with his introduction, as I said, he's a business analyst, stock analyst, and um, he's a chartered accountant by profession. He is now heading the trust line as country head with specialization in PMS services for HNIs. Uh, he's also co-founded Bhajohari Manna, and of course, that makes him one of the entrepreneurs of a delectable uh, restaurant brand. But I will probably be thrown off the stage if I don't give the <laughs> you know, main intro. He is Ray's original Topshe. We are extremely lucky to have him. Today we get to hear him speak about his entrepreneurial journey and his talks on different social media accounts, on television, on electronic medias has motivated several, several investors, several innovators to create several entrepreneurs to think innovatively. It's because of him um, a lot of uh, innovations have come up in the state and we are extremely proud of that as well. We, it is an extreme honor to get to hear him speak. Thank you so much for being with us, Mr. Chatterjee. Check, check. I would, sorry, I would um, request the director of NSCC to please come up along with the principal to felicitate Mr. Chatterjee for us. I would request the students also help him. Close on yours. Namaskar. Shuruti bhalo bhalo gift pele monte to bhalo hai ya. Gift bapate hi rakho. Entrepreneurship niye katha hobe, but am I allowed to speak in Bengali? I mean, everyone understands that. Huh? But if there's a problem, there's no problem. English ko kora hobe. Anyway, the presentation would be in English, so. Uh, that won't be an issue. 
হ্যাঁ ওটা তো হয়ে যাবে স্যার বাংলারা বাঙালিরা কে বাংলা বলতে জানে একমাত্র আমি সত্যজিৎকে দেখেছি যে পিওর বাংলাটা কথা বলতে বলতেন এক পেয়ালা চা নিয়ে এসো কটা বাঙালি এক পেয়ালা বলে তোমার আপিস নেই আজকে সবাই তো অফিস বলি আমরা সো বাঙালি বাংলাটা হারিয়ে যাচ্ছে এনিওয়ে উইথ টাইম যেটা হয় ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজের একটা এক্সপ্রেশন তৈরি হয় অ্যান্ড সেটা চলে এবং সেটা খুব অ্যাপ্রোপ্রিয়েট মানে অনেক জিনিস আছে হাই আমি হাই ব্যাপারটা তো আমার ছোটোবেলা কখনো আমি শুনিনি এখন এটাই তো নর্মাল হয়ে গেছে হাই আই হাউ আর ইউ তো অ্যাডাপ অ্যাডাপশানটা খুব দরকার অ্যাডাপ্ট করাটা খুব দরকার তো অন্তপ্রেনারশিপে যখন কথা হলো তো আমার জীবনে দেখা অ্যান্টারপ্রেনার বলতে তো সত্যিতে কেন যে সাবজেক্টটা ধরত যে সাবজেক্টটা ধরত আরে নিজের বাড়ির গয়না বিক্রি করে একটা সিনেমার কবি প্যাশন ছিল সেটা তো পাথর পাচারই হলো আর কত বড় বিজনেস হয়ে গেল প্রাইভেট প্রডিউসাররা এলো না বিধানবাবু ছিলেন বলে গভর্নমেন্ট এসে গেল এখনও রয়্যালটি পায় আমি ওয়েস্ট বেঙ্গল গভর্নমেন্টে খবর টবর নিয়ে দেখেছিলাম যে টোটাল রয়্যালটি কত পেয়েছে সাংঘাতিক সোনার কেল্লায় আবার একটা অন্টারপ্রেনারশিপ ব্যাপার প্রডিউসার আসলো না কেন ছবিতে কোনো মহিলা ক্যারেক্টার নেই একমাত্র আমার মা ছাড়া আমার মা রেখা চ্যাটার্জি যিনি বর্তমান সন্দীপ রায়ের শাশুড়ি তো ওই মহিলা ছাড়া কেউ ছিল না সো ইফ ইউ হ্যাভ আ আইডিয়া দ্যাট ইউ ক্যান মেক আ ফিল্ম উইদাউট আ লেডি ইন দ্য রোল ইটস স্টিল ইজ আ সুপার হিট আর এখন তো নতুন ডিজিটালি রেস্টোর্ট হয়েছে সেটা মানে ফাটাফাটি হয়েছে মানে আমি ওরকম ডিজিটালি রেস্টোর্ট ছবি কীরকম দেখতে হয় আই উইশ দ্য গভর্নমেন্ট এক্সিবিটস ইট টু দ্য স্টুডেন্টস অ্যান্ড দ্য ইয়াং জেনারেশন সো ওটা আমার দেখা কিন্তু সেই দেখার থেকে আজকে এক্সাম্পল হিসেবে রাদার কেস স্টাডি হিসেবে আমি ডেফিনেটলি একটু আগে ভজরি মান্ডার রেফারেন্সটা হয়েছিল তো ওটা কিভাবে একটা স্টার্ট আপ ছিল কিংবা অন্তপ্রেনারশিপ প্রোগ্রাম ছিল সেটা ম্যানেজেরিয়াল টক্সের মাধ্যমে আমি আই ট্রাই টু প্রেজেন্ট সো দ্যাট ইউ ক্যান গেট অ্যান আইডিয়া বিকজ ইউ তোমরা সব ইঞ্জিনিয়ার হবে আগামী দিনে সো অবভিয়াসলি ইউ উড বি হ্যান্ডলিং ইনোভেশনস অ্যাট এভরি পয়েন্ট অফ টাইম ইন দ্য টার্মস অফ ইউর ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং এক্সেলেন্স বিকজ প্রোডাক্ট বানানোর জন্য তো ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং ব্যাপারটা খুব দরকার আছে সব জায়গায় সব প্রোডাক্ট বানাতেই ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং খুব দরকার যে একটু আগে এগ্রিকালচার নিয়ে কথা হচ্ছিল আই থিঙ্ক দে ইজ এ হিউজ স্কোপ অফ ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং ইন টু এগ্রিকালচার বিকজ দ্যাটস দ্য ওয়ে দ্য এগ্রিকালচার ক্যান বিকাম দ্য রিয়েল বিগ স্টোরি অ্যান্ড আই বিলিভ দ্যাট দ্যাট স্টোরি ইজ গো টু হ্যাপেন ইন ইন্ডিয়া প্রোডাক্টিভিটি থেকে আরম্ভ করে কোয়ালিটি অফ প্রোডাকশান ইত্যাদি ইত্যাদি তো আমি একটু প্রেজেন্টেশনটা নিয়েই যাচ্ছি দুটো বুল কি করছে না সো একটু লাইটটা যদি কম হয় তাহলে ফোকাসটা বেশি হবে আমাদের ফিল্মের ভাষায় একটা আলো এখানে ডাইরেক্ট পড়ছে সেটা হ্যাঁ এটা অনেক বেটার হয়ে গেছে আর দরকার আর দরকার এরপর আমাকে দেখা যাবে না বেশি আলো বন্ধ করো তো অন্টারপ্রেনারশিপের প্রথম কথা হচ্ছে হোয়াট ইজ ইট আগে তো ডেফিনেশনটা যেতে হবে সো উই হ্যাভ টু ডিফাইন what is the entrepreneurship bapar ta ki to jodi definition e jai ekhane bolchi je is a act of creating a business or businesses while building and scaling it to generate profit to entrepreneurship failure hote pare profitable hote pare আমাদের যে স্টার্ট আপ যে ইকো সিস্টেমটা তৈরি হয়েছে একশোটার মধ্যে নাইনটি টুটা ফেলিয়ার ইন্টারন্যাশনাল স্ট্যাটিস্টিক্স ইন্ডিয়ায় হয়তো একটু বেটার অতটা ফেলিয়ার নয় বা যেগুলো ফেলিয়ার সেগুলো তো সব মহা মহা টাকার ফেলিয়ার তো ওটা চলবে কিছু জিনিস ট্রাই করতে গেলে ফেল হবেই সব যে সাকসেস হবে তা নয় আমাদের স্কুলের কিংবা কলেজ লেভেলে খুব ভালো যে চ্যাপ্টারটা পড়াশুনো করেছিলাম পরীক্ষার হলে গিয়ে ওটা ফেল বেড়ে দিয়েছি জানা অঙ্ক ভুল সো এসব পার্ট অফ লাইফ দ্যাটস নট দ্য ইম্পর্টেন্ট পার্ট দ্য ইম্পর্টেন্ট পার্ট ইজ টু ক্যারি অন ক্যারি অন হোয়াট ইউ ফিল দ্যাট ইজ দ্য রাইট পাথ সো 
এন্টারপ্রেনারশিপে এখন আমরা এই 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 ছেলেরা বড় ছেলে স্কুল কলেজ কিছু গেল না হ্যাঁ কি কাণ্ড করেছে দেখি কিরকম কাণ্ড করলো সবাই জানে ফেসবুক মা কেউ জানে এখন ওর মার্কেট ক্যাপিটালাইজেশন হচ্ছে তিনশো একচল্লিশ থ্রি ফর্টি ওয়ান বিলিয়ন ডলার্স ইন টু থাউজেন্ড টোয়েন্টি টু কলেজে ছিল না কিন্তু তোমাদের মতো ভেবে দেখো না আমি অন্য অন্য কিছু বলছি না বাট দিস ইজ অ্যান এক্সাম্পল অফ অ্যান্টারপ্রেনারশিপ আর স্টার্টিং ক্যাপিটাল ওয়াজ ওলি ফাইভ ল্যাক ডলার খুব ছোট অ্যামাউন্ট আমেরিকার জন্য ফাইভ ল্যাক ডলার তো খুব ছোট অ্যামাউন্ট তো এটা আমাদের চোখের সামনে এক্সাম্পল আছে এক্সাম্পল থেকে আমরা উই ক্যান রিক্রিয়েট আওয়ার পাথ আওয়ার থিঙ্কিং অ্যান্ড দ্যাট ইজ ইম্পর্টেন্ট টু আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড আর একজন আছে তিনিও ওস্তাদ কলেজ ছেড়ে এটা চলে এসছিল আমাদের গুগল জেঠু এছাড়া তো হয় না আজকাল কিছু শুধু যেটা দরকার নেই গুগল যেটা আছে সব হয়ে যাবে মার্কেট ক্যাপ ওয়ান পয়েন্ট থার্টিন ট্রিলিয়ন ডলার্স চব্বিশ বছরে আমাদের দেশের ইকোনমি সাইজ হচ্ছে টু পয়েন্ট থ্রি ট্রিলিয়ন ডলার এখানে একটা কোম্পানি চব্বিশ বছরে আমাদের দেশের সেভেন্টি পারসেন্ট সাইজ করে নিয়েছে কি করে করলো মানুষ তো সম্ভব তো তো আমাদের এখানে যারা আছে তাদের কেন এই স্বপ্নগুলো দেখবে না ওয়াই ওয়ার হোয়াটস এ প্রবলেম আরে হবে কি হবে না পরের ব্যাপার দেখতে কি প্রবলেম আছে এটা তো করে দেখিয়েছে তো এক লক্ষ ডলার নাইনটিন নাইনটিতে ইনভেস্ট করে ওয়ান পয়েন্ট থার্টিন ট্রিলিয়ন ডলার নাও এও কলেজ সময় কলেজের সময় চালু করেছিল তো বেশি ওয়েট করো না এই কলেজ করতে করতে শুরু করো পরে দেরি হয়ে যাবে নেক্সট বিল গেটস এও কলেজ চালাকালীন চালু করেছে তো আমার মনে হয় কলেজ লাইফে বুদ্ধিটা বোধ হয় সাংঘাতিক চলে এই আমাদের মতন চার্টার অ্যাকাউন্টেন্ট কোম্পানি সেটি পাস টাস করতে করতে না ব্রেনটাই একটা ড্যামেজ হয়ে যায় নাও ইটস আ ফ্রেশ ফ্রম দ্য কলেজ অল দিস পিপল দ্য শোন দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড হোয়াট অন্টারপ্রেনারশিপ ইজ অল অ্যাবাউট ইউ হ্যাভ টু ইউ হ্যাভ টু জাস্ট থিঙ্ক নেক্সট এগুলো তো সব আমাদের সব ভালো ভালো নাম আমাদের দেশের নাম পড়াশোনা বিশেষ করেননি ভদ্রলোক করার সুযোগও বোধ হয় পাইনি আমার ধারণা তো সেটা সেভেন্টিন পয়েন্ট সিক্স ট্রিলিয়ন ইন্ডিয়ান রুপিস ফর্টি নাইন ইয়ার্সে অফকোর্স এই লাস্ট ফেজে স্পিডটা বেড়েছে আফটার ওর ছেলে এসে ব্যাপারটাকে ম্যানেজ করছে এখন তো এভরিথিং এভরিথিং ইজ দেয়ার কে বলেছিল রিলায়েন্সকে জিও বানাতে আইডিয়াটা এসছিল জিও পুরো মার্কেট শেয়ারটা নিয়ে বসে আছে মোটামুটিভাবে কে বলেছিল ওকে রিলায়েন্স রিটেইল করতে দোকানদারি ব্যবসায় তো আর্ধেক লোককে ফেল মেরে বসিয়ে রয়েছে ব্যাপারটা তো অয়েল ওরিয়েন্টেড ব্যবসা ছিল এখন হয়ে গেছে ডিজিটাল ওরিয়েন্টেড ব্যবসা ফাইভ জি এসছে ফাইভ জি যে ঢুকবে ফাইভ জি যে কী করতে পারে একটু আগেই আমরা শুনলাম সো ডেটা ইজ দ্য নিউ অয়েল অ্যান্ড ই থট দ্যাট Let me find out the new oil. Abar, eva abar college drop out. This is a common vapor. I mean, college is not a good thing. Abar, when we look at it, so what do, what do they have in common? If... Okay? So, I don't suggest that you have to drop out of the college. I say that the college is not a good thing. এখন তোমাদের ব্রেন প্রফেসার আছে হেল্প করতে তাদের ম্যাচিওর ব্রেন তোমাদের একদম একদম ফ্রেশ মাইন্ড আদারওয়াইজ ইট বিকামস টু লেট বাই দ্য টাইম সি ইফ ইউ আর লুকিং ফর এ গ্রিন প্যাশ্চার যে ভাই টেনশান করতে হবে না একটা চাকরি পাবো একটা মাইনে পাবো মাসের শেষে টাকা আসবে বাবা মা খুশি ওটা যদি মাইন্ডসেট হয় তাহলে হবে তাহলে হবে হবে না যে তা নয় তবে ওই ব্যাপারটা হলো না ওই ব্যাপারটা করতে গেলে এই ব্যাপারটা করতে হবে এই ভদ্রলোক থার্ড রিচেস্ট ম্যান ইন দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড চোখের সামনে হলো আরে কার জন্য হলো না হলো ওই সময় আলোচনা করে লাভ নেই হয়েছে 
নিন্দুকের অনেক কিছু বলবে হাওয়াটা খুব দরকার অনেক বড় বড় বাঙালি ইন্ডাস্ট্রিজ কাদের জন্য ইন্ডাস্ট্রিজ হয়েছে আমার কাছে ইতিহাসে পাতা থেকে নাম দেওয়া আছে কারা কার জন্য তারা বড় বড় ব্যবসায়ী হয়েছে সেখানেও একটা এক্স ফ্যাক্টর কাজ করত ফ্যাক্টর তো কাজ করবে বাট এ হচ্ছে এত তাড়াতাড়ি বড় লোক হয়ে গেল কি করছে কে জানে আমি ঠিক বুঝিও না তো এর মধ্যে কি ব্যাপার আছে এও কলেজ ড্রপ আউট তো বিদেশে যাই তো কলেজ ড্রপ আউট দেশে দেখি তো কলেজ ড্রপ তো কলেজটা কি এত খারাপ জায়গা নাকি ন ন ন ন ইজ আ মাইন্ড উইচ মিস বি ক্রিয়েটেড ইনি থ্রু এডুকেশন এডুকেশন ছাড়া কোনো মাইন্ড তৈরি হতে পারে না যত কোয়ালিটি জিনিস পৃথিবীতে আছে তার পিছনে একটা বড় এডুকেশনাল ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড আছে তাহলে হবেই না ব্যাপারটা জোকস এ পার্ট এদের প্রত্যেকের মধ্যে একটা বিজনেস প্ল্যান ছিল একটা কনসেপ্ট একটা স্ট্র্যাটেজি সেটা যে বিজনেসই হোক একটা কনসেপ্ট লাগে একটা স্ট্র্যাটেজি লাগে আমি সেটা থ্রু দিয়ে রান রান ডাউন করব যাতে একটু ধরা যেতে পারে একটা প্র্যাকটিক্যাল এক্সাম্পল থেকে তোমরা তোমাদের নিজেদের মতো করে সাজাতে পারবে অলওয়েজ ইউ ক্যান অলওয়েজ ডিজাইন দ্য সেম থিং ফর ইউর সেলফ এনিথিং লাইক এই বসে বসে আমার হঠাৎ মনে হলো তোমরা তো ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং অনেক কিছু শিখছো ওয়াই ডো ওয়াই ডোন্ট ইউ স্টার্ট এ ইউটিউব চ্যানেল অন ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং ইউ নো ভেরিয়াস স্মল স্মল টিচিং উইচ লট অফ পিপল ডু নট নো মানে একটা প্রসেস ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিংয়ের ব্যাপার একটা মোটর কী করে চলছে মোটরে কী হলে পর চলে আমরা অনেক সাধারণ লোকের এগুলো বুঝি না কার কোথা থেকে আইডিয়া থেকে কী ক্লিক করবে কেউ জানে না বলা যায় না ওইটা করতে গিয়ে তুমি হয়তো নিজেই ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং কলেজ খুলে বসবে ইউ নেভার নো হাও দ্য পাওয়ার অফ দ্য ডিজিটাল কমিউনিকেশন তো বিজনেস প্ল্যান থাকার দরকার আছে এটা একটা কমন ব্যাপার এদের সবাই ছিল আর অন্টারপ্রিনারশিপ ইজ নট ফর শর্টকাটস অ্যান্ড কুইক মানি এটা একটু খেয়াল রাখতে হবে শর্টকাট করতে গেলে অ্যাপ্লিকেশন মারো বায়োডাটা ফেলো চাকরি নাও শর্টকাট কোনো টেনশন নেই যে মাত্র ওখান থেকে বেরিয়ে আসতে পারবে দেখবে একটা অন্য কিছু হচ্ছে হয়তো ইনিশিয়াল জার্কস আসবে ডেফিনেটলি জার্কস আসবে আর হার্ড ওয়ার্ক দিন রাত এটা আট দশ বছর লেগে যাবে কাজ করতে করতে এবং হয়তো ফ্যামিলির সাথে সময় কাঠাবার চান্স কম ফ্রেন্ডসের সাথে সময় কম এটা হবে আরে বাবা দাঁড়িয়ে পড়তে পারলে এই ফ্রেন্ডসগুলোই সব চলে আসবে দাঁড়িয়ে পড়লে ফ্যামিলি চলে আসবে নিজের চোখে দেখা আছে এগুলো সো ইউ হ্যাভ টু থিঙ্ক দ্যাট ডু আই গো থ্রু আ প্রসেস দিস ইজ এ পেইনফুল অ্যান্ড হার্ড ওয়ার্ক আমরা দু হাজার তিনে দেখো আন্তশিপ অন্টারপ্রিনারশিপ প্রোগ্রাম বাই পারসেন্স উইথ নো বিজনেস ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড কোনো বিজনেস ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ডে নেই যেখানে একটা অন্টারপ্রিনারশিপ স্টার্ট আপ প্রোগ্রাম চালু হয় নো বিজনেস ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ড বিজনেস কী করে করতে হয় সেটাই কেউ জানে না টিম আমরা ছিলাম বাট কেউ অ্যাকচুয়ালি এই ফুড টুডের ব্যাপারে আমরা কেউ ইনভলভ নই ওই গৌতম একটু রান্না ফান্না করতে জানে আমি একটু ভালো খেতে ভালোবাসি আর কেউ ওই সবের মধ্যে না একজন মেডিকেল একজন রেলওয়ে সাপ্লাই এইসব সব ব্যাপারটা আবার বাট বন্ধুরা খেতে ভালোবাসি আড্ডা মারতে ভালোবাসি একটা টিম ছিল প্ল্যান কিচ্ছু প্ল্যান না ন প্ল্যান কি একটা কিছু করব কি ও জানি না কি করব ওটা কি আচ্ছা একটা করি না তারপর দেখা যাবে কি হবে দ্যাট ওয়াজ ইট ফান্ড কিচ্ছু নেই টাকাই নেই কোনো টাকাই ছিল না আমাদের আর টাকা থাকলে পকেট থেকে থোড়ি বার করব কারণ যে জিনিসটা করতে যাচ্ছি সেটাই তো জানি না কি করতে যাচ্ছি তো বেকার বেকার টাকা ওড়াবো কেন তো দু হাজার তিনে এরকম একটা ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ডের ব্যাপারটা শুরু করা যায় 
এজটা আমাদের ফরে ছিল না একটু বয়স বেশি হয়ে গেছিল তোমরা তো খুব ইয়াং আছো কোনো চিন্তাই নেই তোমাদের তোমাদের এজটা রয়েছে হ্যাঁ এই একটা প্যাশনেট আইডিয়া ছিল যে খাবারের দোকান বানাবো তাও আবার যারা ছিল না কি খাবারের দোকান বানাবে বাট খাবারের দোকান বানাবো কেউ না খেলে আমরা নিজেরা খেয়ে নেবো এরকম একটা অ্যাটিচিউড ছিল বাট খাবারটা পছন্দের বিষয় খাবারটার মধ্যে প্যাশনের একটা ব্যাপার ছিল এইভাবে ব্যাপারটা আমরা আড্ডা মারতে মারতে বার করেছিলাম তো রয়্যাল বেঙ্গল টাইগার কেন এলো পশ্চিমবঙ্গে কলকাতা বসে কথা বলছি একটু সুন্দরবনের কাছে আছি তো একটা রয়্যাল বেঙ্গল টাইগারের ছবি না দিলে কীরকম জমবে না কারণ ব্যাপারটা ব্যবসাটা পশ্চিমবঙ্গ ভিত্তিক ব্যবসা ছিল ইটস আ কনসেন্ট্রেড ইন ওয়েস্ট বেঙ্গল দিস পার্ট অফ আর সাইট ওয়েবসাইট আমাদের ওয়েবসাইটে গেলে পর এইসব সাইট ছবি পাওয়া যায় এই ছবিটা বিকে বেলা দেখানোটা ঠিক নয় কারণ অনেকেই ভাবছে যে পাবো তো না কিছু বেকে ছবি দেখে কি হবে প্রথম মাসে ডিজাস্টার ছিল ওই বললাম প্যাশন তো আছে খালি প্ল্যান তো নেই একটা কিছু করব একটা কিছু করব এটা তোমাদের যারা যারা স্টার্ট আপ কিংবা ইত্যাদি তোমরা চালু করবে ইউ উইল অলসো গো বাই দিস ডিজাস্টার মডেল ইট ইস জাস্ট টু শেয়ার দ্য ডোন্ট গেট ওয়ারেড অ্যাবাউট ডিজাস্টার্স ইটস লাইকলি টু হ্যাপেন ডিজাস্টার্স আর পার্ট অফ দ্যাট গ্রেট জার্নি তো আমরা প্রথমে একটা স্ন্যাক শপ খুলেছিলাম হলো না এক মাস পরে বুঝলাম এই স্ন্যাকে কেউ বিক্রি করবে না আমা আমাদের আইডিয়া ছিল যে আমাদের যে প্রথম দোকানটা একডালিয়াতে ওটা সাউথ পয়েন্ট স্কুলের খুব কাছে তো আমরা দেখতাম প্রচুর মায়েরা বাচ্চাদের পিক আপ করার জন্য ওয়েট করতো তো আমাদের তার থেকে ধারণা হলো এই মহিলারা নিশ্চয়ই স্ন্যাক্স খাবে আরে মহিলারা বাড়ি থেকে টিফিনে রুটি আলুর তরকারি সব প্যাক করে চলে আসতো ওটা তো আমি জানি না আর না পয়সা খরচ করে রোজ নাকি স্ন্যাক্স খাবে লুচি ছোলার ডাল ইত্যাদি ইত্যাদি দ্যাট ওয়াজ রং এভরি ডে ইফ দে হ্যাভ টু ডিশ আউট মানি ইট বিকজ ভেরি এক্সপেন্সিভ প্রপোজিশন যেমন তোমরা আজকাল ইয়াং জেনারেশন সুইগি করছো যখন তখন করছো খিদে না পেলেও করছো খিদে পেলেও করছো রাত বেড়াতে ফিরে এসে করছো ভোরবেলা উঠে করে ফেলছো কেন এই একটু খাই এমনি এমনি খাই তো আমাদের সময় তো এসব ছিল না আর তখনও সুইগি টুইগি তখনও খুব একটা আসিনি আসিনি আসেইনি তখনও সো দ্যাট ওয়াজ দ্য ডিজাস্টার দ্যাট আই থে আর থার্ড দ্য কাস্টমার বেস ইজ জাস্ট দেয়ার ইউ জাস্ট ওপেন দ্য শপ অ্যান্ড ইউ গ্র্যাপ দ্য কাস্টমার নো ইট ডাজেন্ট হ্যাপেন লাইক দ্যাট সো উই মাইগ্রেট ইন টু এ পাইস হোটেল পাইস হোটেল কনসেপ্ট হচ্ছে যে আগেকার দিনে কিছু পয়সা দিলে পর একটা ভাত ডাল তরকারি আর মাছের জোল টাইপের একটা রান্না পাওয়া যেত যেটা এখনও নর্থ ক্যালকাটায় প্রচুর পাইস হোটেল আছে সেটা দামগুলো আর পাইস নেই দামগুলো অনেকগুলোই ভজরি মান্ডা থেকে বেশি দাম দেখলাম আমি বা দেখি আমি কারণ আমি এগুলো সারাক্ষণ ঘুরে ঘুরে খেতে যাই একটা সুবিধা আছে আমি গেলে পর ফ্রিতে খাওয়ায় কারণ ভজরি মান্ডা এসছে তো আর না ওই ধান্দায় যাই না আমি দেখতে চাই যে কে কি খাচ্ছে কি ব্যাপার ট্যাপার অসাধারণ মহল মহাবোধি সোসাইটির ঠিক পেছনের গলিতে অসাধারণ অসাধারণ আমি তো বললাম যে আমরা ভজরি এত সাকসেস হলো কি করে আপনি আপনারা থাকা সত্ত্বেও কারণ ইটস অ্যাপসোলিক সিদ্ধেশ্বরী আশ্রম দিস উইথ দ্য পাইস হোটেল কনসেপ্ট দোজ ডেজ এসেন্সিয়ালি টার্গেটেড টুয়ার্স দ্য ব্যাচেলার্স হু এ স্টুডেন্টস ওর মেবি তখনকার দিনে আন্দোলনে তারা যুক্ত ছিল ভারতকে স্বাধীন করার জন্যে এই টাইপের একটা বড় গ্রুপ ছিল ইনফ্যাক্ট নেতাজি সুভাষ বোস উনিও সিদ্ধেশ্বরীর মতো জায়গায় খেয়েছেন পার্ট অফ দ্যাট গ্রুপ সো ইট হ্যাজ এ হ্যাড আ ফ্যান্টাস্টিক হেরিটেজ কনসেপ্ট বাট উই রিয়েলি ডিড নট কপি দ্যাট বাট দ্য কপি ওয়াজ অফ এ পাইস হোটেল আপগ্রেডেড ইন টু এয়ার কন্ডিশন প্লেস বাট দিস পাইস হোটেলস আর নট এয়ার কন্ডিশন সো উইথ দ্যাট টেম্পারেচার হিয়ার অ্যান্ড দেয়ার আমার মনে হয়েছিল এটা এয়ার কন্ডিশন করতে হবে ভেরি গুড 
হয়ে গেল এটা ক্লিক এটা ক্লিক করে গেল কেন ক্লিক করলো তার অনেক কারণ আছে আমার মতে প্রধান কারণ হচ্ছে যে বাঙালি বাড়িতে এবং এখনও সেটা ভালো ভালো লেভেলের রান্না করার লোক নেই কাজের মাসে ইদি হবে না আর মা মাদের বয়স অনেক হয়ে গেছে আর এখন ওই রান্নাঘর ফান্নাঘরে গিয়ে বাটাবুটি এসব হবে না নতুন যারা এই এ প্রজন্মের মেয়েরা এম বি এম বি এ করেছে ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং করেছে সে অফিসে চলে যায় সবালা হাজব্যান্ডও চলে যায় তো এই রান্না ব্যাপারটা কোথা থেকে হবে হবার কোনো জায়গা ছিল না আজ থেকে কুড়ি বছর আগে আর এখন তো আরও বেশি সো দ্যাট ফ্যাক্টার ক্রিয়েটেড আ কাস্টমার বেস হু ওয়ান্টেড টু হ্যাভ দ্য ফুড অ্যাট লিস্ট উইকেন্ড বাট ডিড নট হ্যাভ দ্য মিনস আর এছাড়া যেটা হচ্ছে যে টেকনোলজি জানা ছিল না আমি একদিকে এম বি এ করবো কি ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং করবো আবার মোচার চচ্চুরি জানবো এ তো হয় না রে ভাই তাহলে আমার মোচা দিয়ে শাড়ি খালি চালাতে হবে ইউ ক্যান ডু দিস অ্যান্ড দ্যাট হ্যাজ বিকাম আ বিগেস্ট ইস্যু ইন কলকাতা অর এলসওয়ের এবং দ্য বেঙ্গলি আই সি দ্যাট ইন ব্যাঙ্গালোর কলকাতার মেয়ে কলকাতার ছেলে বিয়ে হয়ে দুজনে ব্যাঙ্গালোর চলে গেছে ওই মেয়েটি বাপের জন্য কোনোদিন রান্নাঘরে ঢোকে দিই সে কী রান্না করে ব্যাঙ্গালোরে সুতরাং আমি অনেক সাথে কথা বলি সো দ্যাট ওয়াজ সামথিং উইচ রিয়েলি ওয়ার্কড দ্যাট দ্য টেকনোলজি ইজ নট অ্যাভেলেবেল এখানে অনেক মেয়েকে দেখতে পাচ্ছি ছেলেরাও অনেকে ভালো শেফ হতে পারে আমি যদি বলি যে একটা খালি হলুদ কাঁচা লঙ্কা দিয়ে একটা রুই মাছের ঝোল করে দেবে গ্যারেন্টি সব ফেল গ্যারেন্টি এটাকে বন্ধ করে দেয় এটা চালু চালু ছিল গ্যারেন্টি ফেল করে যাবে অথচ স্টেপল ফুড হবে বাঙালি জানে না তার কারণটা হচ্ছে হলুদটা তেলটা গরম হওয়ার পরে দিতে হয় না আগেই হলুদটা পাশে জলে গুলে রাখতে হয় তেল গরম হলে পর জলে জল গোলা হলুদটা দিতে হয় এটা বিগ টাইপ চেঞ্জ হয়ে যাবে তাহলে কালো জড়ে কালো জিরের ফোরনটা আগে দেবো না পরে দেবো এইসব কনফিউশনের ব্যাপারটা যেটা হয় সেটা হচ্ছে একটা জলের মধ্যে রুই মাছ চোবানো সেটা সার্ভ হয়েছে দেখতে একটা হলুদ হলুদ রং হলুদ দেওয়া হয়েছে বাট সেটা খাওয়া যাবে না সিম্পল অ্যাজ সিম্পল ফুড লাইক দ্যাট অ্যান্ড আই এম নট এক্সপেক্টিং দ্য ইয়াং জেনারেশন টু ইউ নো রিয়েলি নার্চার বিকজ আই হ্যাভ এ ইন্টারেস্ট তো আমি উকি মেরে মেরে সব জায়গায় খোঁজখবর নিই রেসিপিগুলো লিখি এছাড়াও টেলিভিশনে আমাকে অনেক সময় এই রান্নাঘর ফান্নাঘর ইত্যাদি অনুষ্ঠানে যেতে হয় সেখানে তো অ্যাকচুয়ালি রান্নাটা করে দেখাতে হবে মুখস্ত করে যায় একদম পুরো আমার কুক ফুকদের কাছে যে পরে কী করতে হবে রে বলে পারে একটা প্রোগ্রামে আমার মনে আছে আমাকে আমার শেফ বলছে আপনি আগে পোস্তটা দিয়ে দিলেন আর হ্যাঁ দেওয়ার পরে আমি বুঝেছি যে ওটা ভুল হয়ে গেছে এ টেলিভিশনে চার চার চলে চলে যায় এখন একজন ছেলে কিংবা মেয়ে যদি খুব মন দিয়ে ওই প্রোগ্রামটা দেখতো ও যে রান্নাটা শিখতো সেটা ভুল রান্না বাট ইটস আ ভেরি ইটস আটস ইটস আ সায়েন্স ইটস অ্যান আর্ট অ্যান্ড ইটস অ্যাবসলুটলি ব্রিলিয়েন্ট কি বলবো ব্রিলিয়েন্ট সায়েন্স অ্যান্ড আর্ট কম্বিনেশন দিনের শেষে পেট পেটটা যদি খালি থাকে না কোনো রকম ম্যানেজেরিয়াল ডায়লগ এ কিছু হবে না পেটে খাওয়ারটা দিতে লাগে তাহলে কিচ্ছু হয় না তো আমার এক বন্ধু মোহন বলে মোহন চৌধারী এখানে কলকাতায় সাউথ কলকাতায় প্রথম যখন বেদবিন বলে একটা রোলের দোকান খোলে তো মোহনকে আমি বলছিলাম যে এই 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 এগ রোলের মধ্যে আলু সেদ্ধ তো কেউ দেয় না তুমি একটু আলু সেদ্ধ তো বলো দেখো দাদা আমি বিহারের লোক আমাদের এই আলু চোখাটা একটা ফেভারেট ব্যাপার আচ্ছা আর এছাড়া আমি দেখেছি সব বাসে করে ডালাউসি থেকে গড়িয়াটে মোড়ে যখন বিকেলবেলা আসে না সব বাবুদের খুব খিদে থাকে পেটে খালি একটা এগ রোল পাতলা পরোটা দিয়ে করলে না ঠিক ওদের পেট ভরে না আমি দেখেছি ও আমি ওদের এই জন্য আমি আলু সেদ্ধটা দিয়েছি ভেরি গুড অ্যান্ড দ্যাট ক্রিয়েটেড বেদবিন এখন তিনটে অ্যাসপেক্ট আছে ফিলার অর্থাৎ আলু সেদ্ধটা ঢোকালো থাকলে পর পেটটা ফিল করবে এক ইট ইজ কাউন্টার অ্যাসিডিক টু দ্য অয়েল ইউজড ইন দ্য ওই রোল কারণ আলুটা অ্যাবজর্ব করে অয়েলটা 
মানে ও না জেনে একটা খুব সাইন্টিফিকলি ডিজাইন প্রোডাক্ট করলো যেটা ওর ফ্ল্যাগশিপ আইটেম হয়ে গেল এমন পয়েন্ট হচ্ছে স্টাফিংটা অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইউরোপিয়ান ব্যাপার ইউরোপিয়ান যত ফুড হয় সব স্টাফিংয়ের একটা বড় খেলা হয় তো পয়েন্ট হচ্ছে কীভাবে ইনোভেশন হয় বলা মুশকিল নেক্সট তো প্রোডাক্ট ওয়াজ আ রিকোয়ারমেন্ট অফ দ্য কমন পিপল ভজরি মান্না দ্যাট পয়েন্ট অফ টাইম কমন পার্সন আই ডেন্ট হ্যাভ এনি কাইন্ড অফ টেকনোলজি অর হাই ফাই ফিনেস অ্যান্ড থিংস আর দ্যাট আই ডেন্ট হ্যাভ আই আই ডেন্ট ওয়ান্ট ধনে পাতা দিয়ে মাছের জন্য আবার ফিনেস কী হয় গরম গরম ঢালো বাটিতে প্লেটে ঢালো হয়ে যাবে ওটা ফিনেস করার দরকার নেই আমাকে একজন একটা বাড়িতে খাওয়ালো বলো আমি একটা 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 নতুন আইটেম করেছি খুব ভালো কি ব্যাপার বলো কাতলা মাছ আর কমলা লেবু দিয়ে কাতলা মাছ কমলা লেবু দিয়ে না মানে আচ্ছা ঠিক আছে দেখি এখন ও একটা কাতলা মাছ রসানো কষানো বানিয়েছে ওটার ওটার ওটা গানি সিং করতে গিয়ে তিনটে কোয়া কমলা লেবু চারদিকে ছাড়িয়ে দিয়েছে দেখতে ভালো লাগছে ছবি তুললে ভালো লাগবে বাট হোয়াট কাইন্ড অফ ফুড ইজ দিস সো এই পাগলামি করতে করতে কিন্তু কেউ না কেউ ইনোভেশন করে ফেলতে পারে আমার ধারণা যেমন ফ্রেশ অরেঞ্জ জুস দিয়ে ভেটকি ভাপা একটা বাড়িতে খেলাম ও কমলা লেবুর কোয়া দিয়েছিল আর এই কমলা লেবুর রস দিয়ে করেছে অসাধারণ অসাধারণ টেস্ট পাস আমি তো ইনফ্যাক্ট ওটাকে ইন্ট্রোডিউস করব আমার রেস্টুরেন্টে অসম্ভব ভালো খেতে যাকে আমাদের প্রোডাক্ট আবার সিম্পল কমন লোকের জন্যে রাইস ডাল ফিশ কারি নো হাইটেক অলওয়েজ কিপ ওয়ের এভার ইউ ডিজাইন প্রোডাক্টস কিপ ইট সিম্পল কমপ্লিকেট করো না কমপ্লিকেটগুলো দেখতে খুব ভালো লাগে ওই কমলা লেবু কাতলা মাছ কমলা লেবুর মতন ব্যাপারটা কাজে দেবে না সো অলওয়েজ ট্রাই টু ডিজাইন which is uh, not very very high tech eta always je jinishi banao je jinishi byabsha karo jeta idea hok quality ni kono compromise koro na okhane compromise korle tikbe na just beshi din tikbe na amra onek boro boro branded bideshi branded jinish potro kena icche kore kiba ki ni perfume perfume tar quality er hocche top of the world ysl পোলেস ইত্যাদি ইত্যাদি যে ব্র্যান্ডগুলো আমরা ইউজ করি অনেক অনেক দাম বেশি বাট কোয়ালিটি সাংঘাতিক আর আমাদের ছিল যে আমাদের পাঁচজন বন্ধুই খুব ফুড প্যাশনেট ছিল সো প্রোডাক্টে আমাদের প্যাশন ছিল ইনিশিয়াল ডেজ এখন তো অবভিয়াসলি ফুড রেস্ট্রিকশানস ইত্যাদি ইত্যাদি জন্যের প্যাশনটা আছে কিন্তু খেয়ে উঠ খেয়ে ওঠা যায় না প্লাস প্রত্যেক সময় খাওয়ার যখন একটা নতুন আসে না ওটা অডিট করতে ফ্যাক্টরিতে যেতে হয় তোমাদের এই কলেজের কাছেই ফ্যাক্টরি আমাদের ওই অডিট করতে করতে এত রকম খাওয়ার খেতে হয় প্রত্যেক সপ্তাহে যে আসল খাওয়ার সময় মনে হয় বাবা একটু আলু সেদ্ধ কুমড়ো সেদ্ধ ভাত খাই আর আমি কিছু খাবো না মানে যেটা হয় আর এরকমভাবে তো প্যাশন ফর ফুড ছিল আমরা সব পাঁচজন মিলে এক লক্ষ পঁচিশ হাজার টাকাটা ইনভেস্ট করেছিলাম সেটা মানে অফিসিয়াল ভ্যালুয়েশন টেন ক্রোজ প্লাস বাট অ্যাকচুয়াল ভ্যালু ইজ অ্যাবাউট ফর্টি ক্রোজ তো এক লক্ষ পঁচিশ হাজার চল্লিশ কোটি টাকা গ্রো করতে পারে সিম্পল তোমার আমার চেনা একটা ফুড ব্যবসা এটা হচ্ছে ইম্পর্টেন্ট আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ডিং আই হ্যাভ নট বার্ন ক্যাশ আনলাইক দ্য স্টার্ট আপস বছরের পর বছর কোয়ার্টারের পর কোয়ার্টার লস লস এই বাই জুস ফাই জুস দেখো না ল দু হাজার তিন এখন কুড়ি বছর না আমার আমার এটা তো আমার ক্যাশ ভ্যালুয়েশন করছি আমি যদি অ্যাকচুয়াল ভ্যালুয়েশন করি ইস আমার ফর্টি ক্রোজ হোয়াট আইম ট্রাইডু সেজ দ্যাট ইট ওয়াজ এ ক্যাজুয়াল বিজনেস উই উই ডিড নট ডু দ্যাট বিজনেস উই হ্যাড আওয়ার ওন চাকরি বাকরি মানে হোয়াট এভার ইট ইস আমাদের অন্য ব্যবসা ব্যবসা ছিল সব what i'm trying to say at the idea theke jinish generate hoy ebong generate ta ki hote pare i can scale it up to 1000 crores kono problem nei ami ki korte hobe london e khulte hobe paris e khulte hobe sob to investor boshe ache ekhon ei boshe ke giye london e sob khulbe 
আর আমার উড়িষ্যা বা বাসী উৎকল উৎকল বাসী কুকেরা ও ঠান্ডায় মরে যাবে আমি অনেকবার বলেছি যাবি লন্ডন যাবি না 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 ওটা এখানে গামছায় পরে করবে এখন ওই আমি বিরিয়ানি আবার দুশো আশি টাকা না না ইটস নট দ্য অ্যামাউন্ট অফ দ্য মানি স্যার ইটস দ্য কোয়েশ্চেন অফ আ সাকসেস মানি তো পরে যা হবে হবে আই ক্যান গো ফর এ পাবলিক ইস্যু অ্যান্ড সেল দ্য এন্টায়ার থিং এট এট এ ডিফারেন্ট প্রাইস অল টুগেদার এতে কোনো অসুবিধা নেই প্রিমিয়াম টিমিয়াম গিয়ে আমি পাবলিক ইস্যু থ্রু দিয়ে বেরিয়ে যেতে পারি হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ কারণ তার ওই শেফের ব্যাপারটা হাতে তৈরি করার ব্যাপারটা তো নেক্সট ডে আমরা দু হাজার তিনে একটা রেস্টুরেন্ট দিয়ে চালু করেছিলাম এখন সেটা আমি বম্বেটা বন্ধ করে দিয়েছি সেটা এখন পনেরোটা হয়েছে এবং আমার পকেটের কোনো পয়সা দিয়ে হয়নি আমার যে ওই একটা একটা করে রেস্টুরেন্টের যে মুনাফাটা সেটা দিয়ে আর একটা করে রেস্টুরেন্ট হয়েছে আমি কোনো বাইরের টাকাও নিইনি আমার কাছে কোনো লোন নেই বাট আমি বলছি একটা সাধারণ ভাত মাছের জোল আমার টার্ন ওভার ইজ অ্যাবাউট এই মুহূর্তে এই বছরে অ্যাবাউট থার্টি সেভেন ক্রোজ তো ভাত মাছের জোল সাঁত্রিশ কোটি টাকার কলকাতা বাঙালি খাচ্ছে আপনি গেলে স্যার আপনার জন্য ফ্রি আপনাকে আপনার আমি আপনাকে কস্টিংটা বোঝাই স্যার এটা খুব ইন্টারেস্টিং ব্যাপার একটা তিন কিলোর কাতলা মাছ যদি আপনি কাটেন আপনার পঞ্চাশ গ্রামের একটা মাছের যে এরম সাইজ হয় সেটার দাম পড়বে আট টাকা বাষট্টি পয়সা এইট রুপিস সিক্সটি টু পয়সা এর সাথে আপনার দুটো হাফ আলু যাবে ওয়ান ফোর্থ আলু যাবে এছাড়া মশলা আছে যেটা খুব বড় ইনপুট কোর্স সেটা হচ্ছে গ্যাস গ্যাসের ফুয়েল কস্ট ইজ ভেরি হাই তো সব মিডিয়ে মিশিয়ে ব্যাপারটা টেনে টুনে আপনি আট টাকা বাষট্টি পয়সাটা চোদ্দ টাকা থেকে পনেরো টাকা হবে এবার আপনি ওভারেস লাগান রেন্ট ফ্যান্ট এই ওই যা যা লাগে তাকে সেটা যদি ঢোকান সেটা গিয়ে দাঁড়াবে আনাদার সে আনাদার সাত টাকা একুশ বাইশ টাকায় ব্যাপারটা হয়ে যাচ্ছে যখন আমি বিক্রি করব এটা আমি বিক্রি করবো ষাট টাকা তো থ্রি 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 টাইমস এটা যদি পাকশিট হয় তাহলে ইট উইল বি ফাইভ টাইমস আর এটা যদি চাইনিজ হয় এই হিসেবটা পুরো অন্য হয়ে যাবে কেন হ্যাঁ ঠিক আছে বাট পয়েন্ট হচ্ছে থ্যাংক ইউ ফর দ্যাট বাট আমাদের অ্যাকচুয়ালি কলেজ ফুড কলেজ ক্যান্টিন একটা অন্য জিনিস ওটা আমার এইসব চার্টার কন্ডেন্সি বুদ্ধিগুলো কাজই দেবে না কারণ আমরা তো কলেজ ক্যান্টিন সেন্সিফেসে খেয়েছি অরুণদার রোলের দাম তিনটে রোলের দাম অরুণদার সম্প্রতি মারা গেলেন অরুণদার তিনটে রোলের দাম আমি দিইনি আমি দিইনি অরুণদার সাথে সাংঘাতিক আমার দোস্তি ছিল আই কালকে দেবো অরুণদা কালকে দেবো যা হয় কলেজ লাইফে তো খুব আর অরুণদা ওয়াজ ভেরি লিবারেল তো কলেজ ইজ আ ডিফারেন্ট বল গিয়ে বল টু গেদার বাট দেন আই ডোন্ট নো কলেজের জন্যে আমরা ডিজাইনড কম্বো প্যাক ফ্যাক বানাতেই পারি কোনো অসুবিধা নেই দেখা যাক সেটা তো এখন পনেরোটা রেস্টুরেন্ট হয়েছে এটা দেড় এটা এটা একশো করতে আমার কোনো অসুবিধা নেই আমার কাছে ছেলে নেই ইয়াং জেনারেশন চাকরি 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 আর চাকরি কর না বাট ওয়ের ইজ দ্য বিজনেস জিল ইন ইউ আই উল গিভ ইউ দ্য মানি আই উইল টেক ইউ অ্যান্ড এমপ্লয়মেন্ট বাট শো মি দ্য কালার অফ জিল নেই পাই না পাই না ইনডেপথ যাওয়ার জন্যে সাবজেক্ট ডোমেন এক্সপার্টাইজের জন্যে যতটা ওয়ার্ক আউট করা উচিত আমি তো ছেলেপত্র পাই না সব জায়গায় এটা মনে নয় অন্যান্য যা যা ব্যবসা করি ওয়াই আমার মনে হয় কোথাও একটা থিঙ্কিং প্রসেসটা কোথায় যেন আটকে আছে দ্য ইনডেপ থিঙ্কিংটা করছে না টেম্পোরারিলি রিলিফ চেষ্টা করছে 
যে আমার বন্ধু অমুক জায়গায় কি একটা সফটওয়্যারে কাজ করে কি একটা মাইনে পায় ইত্যাদি ইত্যাদি সেটা খুব ভালো মাইনে হতে পারে সেই মাইনেটা কি ভ্যালুয়েশন ওর ও কি জানে যে ও যে মাইনেটা পায় ইটস রাইটলি ভ্যালুড বাই দ্য কোম্পানি আই ডোন্ট থিঙ্ক সো আমাদের এখানে এমপ্লয়ি বেনিফিটস এর ভ্যালুয়েশন প্রিন্সিপালস নেই হকিং হচ্ছে হকিং হচ্ছে বডি শপিং হচ্ছে তাদের ভ্যালুয়েশনটা বেড়ে যায় দ্যাটস নট দ্য ভ্যালুয়েশন মানে স্যার আশুতোষ মুখার্জি বেঁচে থাকলে আই উড হ্যাভ লাভ টু গোয়ান সিকে স্যার আপনি অ্যাজ এ প্রফেসর আপনার মাইনে কত হওয়া উচিত উনি যদি বলতেন না আমার তো এই সন্দেশটা পেলে আর একটু বাসের ট্রামে যাওয়ার জন্য টাকাটা পেলেই আমার হয়ে যায় বাট ক্যান ইউ ভ্যালু স্যার আশুতোষ মুখার্জি নো আই ডোন্ট থিঙ্ক সো সো আমরা এমপ্লয়িরা আমি নিউ জেনারেশন এমপ্লয়িদের আমি কথা ভাবছি এবং দেখি চারদিক আমার ইন্টুরি আমার ছেলে আর তুই কি জানিস যে তোকে তোকে এই বাইরেটা বাড়িয়ে দিল তুই তো কিছু শিখিসই না এখন ও তুই জানোই না আমি অনেক সস্তায় করছি আচ্ছা তো এগুলো সব আমেরিকান গল্প এছাড়া আমি বলতে 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 বাধ্য হচ্ছি এই পুরো ইকো সিস্টেমটা একটা ফাঁকিবাজের বিরাট গল্প ফাঁকিবাজির বিরাট গল্প যেমন একটা বড় ফাঁকিবাজি হচ্ছে ডাব্লিউ এফ এইচ দেখছে সিনেমা বলছে ওয়ার্ক ফ্রম হোম এই এটা একটা নতুন আরম্ভ হয়েছে যে রোজ অফিস আসবো না ওয়ার্ক ফ্রম হোম করবো আরে ওয়ার্ক ফ্রম হোম আমি তো ওয়ার্ক ফ্রম বেডও করি রাত্রিবেলা লেপের তলা বসে ল্যাপটপে কাজ করছি কেউ আমার বলেনি করতে নিজের তাগিদে করছি তো এগুলো কতগুলো ক্রাইটেরিয়া আমি দেখছি অ্যাজ আ অন্টারপ্রেনার এবং এই জেনারেশনের বিজনেস ম্যান হিসেবে বাট এগুলো রেক্টিফাই হবে এর মধ্যে এক্সেপশন ছেড়ে দেবে দেখতে পাচ্ছি যারা প্রচণ্ড বুদ্ধি খরচ করে কাজকর্ম করছে আমরা গত উনিশ বছরে কন্টিনিউস প্রফিট করেছি দ্যাটস আনাদের প্যারামিটার অফ রানিং এ বিজনেস অন্টারপ্রেনারশিপ ক্যাশ বার্ন করতে দেবো না ক্যাশ বার্ন করতে দেবো না ইফ দেস এ ক্যাশ বার্ন দেস সামথিং রং অ্যাবাউট দ্য বিজনেস মডেল অ্যান্ড লট অফ পিপল ফেল টু আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড দিস অ্যান্ড দ্যাটস প্রিসাইসলি ওয়াই দে ফেল এখানে পিওর ফাইন্যান্সের একটা বড় রোল আসছে যেটা ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং স্টুডেন্টসের কাছ থেকে অবভিয়াসলি আমি আই ক্যানট এক্সপেক্ট ভেরি মাচ বাট দ্যাস ইট ম্যাটার ইফ ইউ হ্যাজ ইজ ওন লজিক অ্যান্ড আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ডিং হি ক্যান জলি ওয়েল আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড দ্য ফাইন্যান্স আমার এই অর্গানাইজেশনের কোনো হসপিটালি হসপিটালিটি ম্যানেজমেন্টের গ্র্যাজুয়েট নেই মানে নেতাজি সুভাষ আরেকটা আছে এরকম নেতাজি সুভাষ বোস ইনস্টিটিউট অফ হোটেল ম্যানেজমেন্ট ওখানে মাঝে মাঝে গিয়ে আমায় কথাবার্তা বলতে হয় তো ওখানকার ছেলে মেয়েদের আমার কাছে নেই ইনফ্যাক্ট তারাতলা কেটারিং একটা ইনস্টিটিউট আছে গভর্নমেন্টের সেখান থেকে একটা ছেলেকে মাঝখানে না হয়েছিল তো আমি রেস্টুরেন্টটা বসেছিলাম আমি যাও অর্ডারটা নিয়ে এসো ওই টেবিল থেকে বলে হ্যাঁ স্যার যাচ্ছি তো একটা গ্রুপ এসছিল এগারো বারো জন যা হয় উত্তেজিত একজন বলল মাটন কষা খাবে ও লিখল মাটন কষা ক এক প্লেট দেবো হ্যাঁ ওটা আমি খাবো খালি ওয়ান মাটন কষা আর একজন বলল এই পাবদা সরষে খাবো কটা স্যার দুটো পাবদা সরষে দেখে দিল লিখে ফেলল এটা হচ্ছে হোটেল ম্যানেজমেন্টের ছেলে এবার কি দেখা গেল যখন টেবিলে সার্ভ হলো ফার্স্ট আইটেম হচ্ছে কষা মাংস সেকেন্ড আইটেম হচ্ছে পাবদা সরষে যেরম যেরম করে দেখেছে সেরম সেরম করে সার্ভিস হয়েছে তো পড়াশুনো করে ওয়াজ দিস দ্য প্রসেস ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং ইউ লার্ন এভরিথিং হ্যাজ গট এ প্রসেস সিচুয়েশন তো সেটা আমাদের কোনো ম্যানেজমেন্ট গ্র্যাজুয়েট নেই বাঁচিয়েছে কোনো হোটেল ম্যানেজমেন্টে শেফস নেই আরও বাঁচা আমার শেফ যে আছে পুজোর সময় ভোর চারটের সময় রান্না করতে বসে অ্যালো উইথ স্টিম প্রায় সাড়ে তিন হাজার লোকের খাওয়ার বেলা এগারোটার মধ্যে বিভিন্ন রেস্টুরেন্টে পাঠিয়ে দেয় আমি খালি বলি ঋষিকেশ ঠিক আছে তো বলে হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ কোনো অসুবিধা নেই এটাই যদি শেফ টেফ তাজ তাজবেঙ্গল থেকে নিয়ে আসতাম ওর টুপিটা প্রথমে খুলে পড়তো 
বলে এত লোকের রান্না একসাথে করা যাবে না তো এ জানে মাস স্কেল প্রোডাকশান বিকজ দিস ইজ নট আ লাইন প্রোডাকশান আইটেম ইটস আ প্রসেস প্রোডাকশান লাইন প্রোডাকশান প্রসেস প্রোডাকশান অনেক তফাত আছে টাইম খায় বেশি আমার কাছে খালি রুরাল ছেলে গ্রামগঞ্জের ছেলে সব তাদের সে কী বলিয়ে দিয়েছি তো সাকসেস একটা প্যাশনের থ্রু দিয়ে সাকসেস হলে পর খুব ভালো লাগে সেটাই শেয়ার করছিলাম আজকে ইট ইজ নট হাউ দ্য বিজনেস ক্যান বি বেটার অ্যান্ড অল দ্যাট নো দ্য প্যাশনটা সাকসেস হয়েছে এটা খুব ভালো লাগে ওকে লাখ তো একটু লাগবেই লাখ ছাড়া তো কিছু হবে না আমরা পার্টনারশিপ কোম্পানি ছিলাম এখন পাবলিক লিমিটেড কোম্পানি আমি পাবলিক ইস্যুর কথা ভাবছি না এই মুহূর্তে বাট ঠিক আছে উই আর এ পাবলিক লিমিটেড কোম্পানি উই হ্যাভ বিন আই অ্যাম ক্যালকাটা জোকার কেস স্টাডি ফার্স্ট টাইম ছোটো একটা ব্যবসা সব সবাই আমাদের অ্যাওয়ার্ড দিয়েছে বিভিন্ন সময় নিউ ইয়র্ক টাইমসে উই হ্যাভ ফিচার ট্রাভেল এক্সপি এনডি টিভি গুড টাইমস কোরিয়ান স্টেট টেলিভিশন হাইওয়ে অন প্লেট বা যা আছে ইন্টারন্যাশনাল ইন্টারন্যাশনাল সেই মাছের ঝোল ভাত হাইওয়ে অন প্লেট সেখানে মাছের ঝোল ভাত দেখানো হচ্ছে কিছু অবাঙালি আছে হাঁ করে থাকি যদি কি বুঝতে পারছে না রাহুল গান্ধী যখন গুগল সার্চ ফার্চ করে এসে আমাদের ভজরিতে ঢুকলো ও একদম ক্লিয়ার ছিল শুক্ত খাবে ভেটকি পাতুরি খাবে আর চিংড়ি মাছের মালাইকারি খাবে তো ওটা ওডি ঢোকাতে কী হলো ওই টেলিভিশন প্রেস সব দৌড়ে এসছে আর ঢুকতে দেবে না কেন রাহুল গান্ধী খাবে আর যারা দোকানে ছিল খাচ্ছিল তারা সব রাহুল গান্ধীকে দেখে ঘাবড়ে গেছে মানে কী ব্যাপার খুব ভালো ছেলে বলেছে যে আরে শান্তিতে খান না আমিও খেতে এসছি আপনারা খাচ্ছেন খান না সো হি ওয়াজ হি রোড বি আস আর লেটার সেই দ্যাট আই মিন অ্যাপসুলি সুক্ত ইজ আউট অফ দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড মানে এটা বাই দ্য ওয়ে আমাদের সুক্ত আমি যখন বম্বেতে আমাদের রেস্টুরেন্টসগুলো চালাতাম মানে প্রত্যেক সপ্তাহে মিস্টার অমিতাভ বচ্চনের বাড়িতে সুক্ত তিন প্লেট যেতেই যেত ওনার ফেভারেট ছিল ইজ এ ভেজিটেরিয়ান তো সারাক্ষণ ছিল তার মানে একটা বাঙালি সুক্ত যদি অমিতাভ বচ্চন আর রাহুল গান্ধীকে পছন্দ করে এটা তো সারা ইন্ডিয়াতে আমি বেঁচতে পারি লোক নেই লোক আসলেই আমি করে ফেলবো কারণ এখন তো আমার খালি আইডিয়ার ওপর কাজ হবে আমাকে তো ফিজিক্যালি দৌড়তে হবে না আমি এক্স্যাক্টলি কস্টিংটা কী জানি সেই ধরো এই ব্যাপারটা তৈরি হয়ে যায় ওয়ার দ্য টাইম তো এটা একটা এক্সাম্পল অফ এ লোকাল অন্টারপ্রেনারশিপ উইচ ক্যান গো গ্লোবাল ইফ ইউ সো ওয়ান তোমাদের সবাইকে ধন্যবাদ ফর স্পন্সারিং ভজরি অল দিস ডেজ তোমার বাবা মাদের ধন্যবাদ তোমাদের আত্মীয় স্বজনদের ধন্যবাদ বিকজ তোমাদের জন্যই ভজরি মান্না ক্রিয়েট হয়েছে হুম আপনার পাঁচ বন্ধু আমারই ব্রেন নামটা আমার দা না ওটা তো বাড্ডা দিয়ে শুনে রেখুরি ওটা তো একটা শেফ যে সারা পৃথিবী দিয়ে ঘুরে এসে কি সব কনকাকশন করে কিছু রান্না রান্না করেছি এটা ফেমাস মান্ডা দিয়ে গান ইনফ্যাক্ট মান্ডা দিয়ে যখন আমাদের রেস্টুরেন্ট এসছে বলছে আমি তো ভাবতেই পারছি না আমার গান দিয়ে একটা রেস্টুরেন্ট হতে পারে হ্যাঁ না আপনি আপনি কি কি করলে পর কি কি হতে পারে সেটা নিজেই আপনি জানেন না আপনি যে সব গান গিয়েছেন সেগুলো যে কি পর্যায়ে গেছে সে আপনি নিজেই জানেন না নো ওয়েন আই ওয়েন আই ওয়েন আই ওয়াজ ট্রাই টু ফাইন্ড আউট দ্য নেম আই থট দ্য নেম শুড বি এ রিকল ভ্যালু ফর বাঙালি যার সাথে বাঙালি খাওয়ারটা রিলেট করতে পারবে হ্যাঁ জানি মাংস রান্না মাংস রান্না জানি 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 ব্যাঙ্গালোরের বাড়িতে হুম তো এটা হলো মানে নামটা হলো এটা ব্র্যান্ড হয়ে গেল ব্র্যান্ডের আবার ভ্যালুয়েশন আয় আমি জোকা করে দিল হ্যাঁ আপনারা এত টাকা ভ্যালুয়েশন করে দিয়েছেন এটা করবেন স্যার বলুন হ্যাঁ না এর অর্ধেক টাকা আমায় দিয়ে দিন আপনাকে আমি ব্র্যান্ডটা দিয়ে দিচ্ছি একশো পঁচিশ কোটি টাকা ব্র্যান্ড ভ্যালুয়েশন করে বসে আছে বাট আই নো ওয়াই দে ডিড ইট বিকজ আজকে তো আপনি কী ভাবছেন রেস্টুরেন্টে গিয়ে একটা খাওয়া দাওয়া লেসে ভজরি মান্নার আলু ভাজা আমি প্যাক করব ক্যান করব সারা সারা পৃথিবীতে ঝুরঝুরে আলু ভাজা যাবে নিউ ইয়র্কে বসে মুখার্জি সাহেব 
otherwise Boston first consulting director, she is to dal or yalu haja pay. So, ato khushi. Ki ma ami jodi mutton taake can kore. Dhara ya prachur bachelor na toure bedo hoy medical representative itta di itta di. Hotel ki se roti ya se dal bhalla ke na. Ami oke diye dilam. Adam can kora coke bottle packet. Oka na galo khullo. Adu gorom jole diye dilo. Hoy galo mutton taak bangla bhad diye khe di. So, it has scalability, I can do so much. But, I said, young mind, young body, young energy, I don't see. And I say, I am not, I am not from the food industry, I am a charter content. I am into from the investment world. But we all love, Bangali, all love food. Why Bangali? 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 ओके ये तू खाई दियो, शे तो खेस हो बीतो को बोले से जाए ही, तू भी और चला हमारे साथ एक बार, आवार खेते जाओ, वो पसंद अशोभ वो पसंद हो जाए, उड़ा इबाबे पातुरी खेते वो बुझ तो ना, उड़ा इबाबे फिश फ्राई खेते वो बुझ तो ना, टेक्नोलॉजी किचु नहीं, फिश फ्राई के टेक्नोलॉजी she can take Jacob of Haja or a Juan Dito. Amra, Amade, Bajuri Manda, the fish fried ache, or Tamra Juan Tayus Kuri. Acto Hajum Karo, I wrote that a distinct taste as she. Should I click Korealo? Issue Shetana, Issue Tacha, Amade Dakadeki, Amadana Axota, Erkum type restaurant, Kolkata Kulagach. That is also big, big pride. Tigaji, me too, Jetabala, copy Kore. आमादे व्यवसाय साथे उन्नो लोग करो व्यवसाय करे तारा प्रॉस्पर कुछ चीज़ आई एम वेरी हैप्पी बोल आई डोंट फील एनी कंपटीशन करो कंपटीशन को नुमानी है ना किसे कंपटीशन घुड़े 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 करे सवाई खाबे चलो कंपटीशन नहीं भेबो ना यू आर कंपटीटिंग अगेंस्ट योरसेल्फ ऑलवेज इन लाइफ नॉट � there is a competition, no chance. You are acquiring knowledge through this institution or through the college. Find out how much of that knowledge can you digest within yourself and how much of the knowledge which you have digested, you can express it in terms of either conversion or application. This is what I mean. I have been she was in class 12, 12 of the Gechino, Tarpashi Parashar Karate. So he was rattling off balance sheet of 5,000 Indian companies like that. So he was in the computer firm. He said, why do you have to do this? Why do you have to practice? Why do you have to do this? 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 I said, why do you have to do this? Practice करो हो बे। अभी देखी चीज़ over the time practice करे पाँच हज़ार ना है, पाँच सौ में जानी है। पाँच सौ एक एंड रेट लो, पाँच हज़ार ना मैं पढ़ी ना। आगे हाँ तो बेशी बात था, बट आज कल और तो पढ़ी ना, बोले बोले जाच्ची कि मामा हाँ तो इंटरेस्ट होने, ऑनी गुले कंपनी। So it is all possible, it's all possible। अभी वो तो at time ना उचित ना मर, अरे तो See, Madam, rural, rustic wisdom is a definition of this wisdom. This is a good rural area logo, it has a natural flair to use the logic and act as required at that part of time. I mean, this is a natural vapor. So, this is a good idea. So, if you have a restaurant, you can have a restaurant for one month. और छह मास पड़े ही ऐतकुल रेस्टोरेंट घोड़ा पड़े ना और पूरा सेंस तोड़ी हो जाए इसे टाइम ये लिखे नहीं ना एसओपी होएगा लो और टाइम मुख्य से ही खाली कोड़ बे एक टाइम ऑपरेटिंग प्रोसीजर्स फॉलो हो बे ना सो आमादे एसओपी ना चाहे बुके बुके आए रातो नहीं दिखाए तो की देख ली ए शंकर जा कु तो क्यों होलो बहुत दिनों जावर्षा बोल रहे तो घी दी लेना आमादा दारा खूब खराब लगेज 
Now he has understood. I said, Tali Shankar ke bole chish? Bole chish maane gala gal di chish. Toh Shankar now gets prepared and this guy has observed. Ehi kore kore, ehi rural chhele gulo ke toh ehi kore chish. And um, loyalty factor is very high because oh then na aspiration level gulo na acta jaya gav di aach. But they don't want to hop, skip and jump and go into some other restaurant and say, Oh, I'm going to give you a lot of money. This is not the case. Loyalty is not the case. Loyalty is the case. So-called, so-called educated people are the case. We have to look at the case. We have to look at the case. We have to look at the case. Because you have to take care of them in a proper way. No, not really. Dad, I'm going to die. What is it? Look at the report. It's a pity. It's a pity. अब कोठा देखा थी इस कोई आमादे लोग का ना ग्रामे कांटेक्ट यार की आचे तो आसपास तो कोलकाता तो देखा थे आपने अब नहीं है बोलो ना राग्बो को तो क्वार्टर ने तो जाएगा नहीं अब शेर तो आमी बुझ बो आर की बोल चे डाक्टर का तो खरोच बोलो ये सब टेस्ट पेस्ट कोडे तो पोरो बीसा के टक्का तो धाक्का but I cannot say under the terms of your employment, the medical reimbursement will happen up to the age of Mundavini. Car key problem is a bolo, I'm there to help you out. So they have the loyalty factor. They have the loyalty factor. Protect your LIC policy, could you do Kyo Jarena? Kao ke boli di? Protect your LIC policy, could you do Kyo Jarena? Ebon shop term insurance. Jodi kichu hai, podi bat through hai jave. Egu lo, oli ki to kora ache. Oda jane dadara bhalo. कि भालो जाने ना जोखन जोखन जार जार प्रॉब्लम है वी 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 कम आउट ऑफ़ द वे एंड डू इट आई थिंक दैट्स अ लवली एचआर पॉलिसी इंस्टेड ऑफ़ ऑल दिस लेखा हाँ तीस दिन पीएल ना पौचीस दिन पीएल हाँ शात्ता कैजुअल मेडिकल पोनेरो वो बड़ा खुजा रहा चल मेडिकल किसी होग ना पोनेरो ना दिन तो पाव he was uh, in the hospital for seven months. Seven months he was in the hospital. Seven months full payment made. Hospital bill, everything paid for. Taro Laktaka. To Oda to Jan diye debe na? And he was an important boy. And unfortunately, Baba ta ghode chido. To she to Baba ta Jan do diye da. You know, ei bhabe amra HR practice ta kori ebang. Shabai ke boli, to chena ke ho thakne gra me boli shto. हमारे इखारे नहीं आए तो दे मेंबर गेट मेंबर जी कॉन्सेप्ट आ चुना शेव भावे एम्प्लॉय गेट एम्प्लॉय कॉन्सेप्ट आगे डीएसी ताले क्या है कोहेसिव डिस्टर्ब कुछ भालू था के नाले क्या है एलियन फैक्टर है बट आमिर अच्छे लगे डीएस लाऊं ये तक्की चीनी ना आवार मतलब कथा बोले ना शाहूरी शाहूरी � आमा तो वही टाइप का काजे तो लोग ना खावट सर्व कर बे प्रोडक्शन कर बे दोनों दोनी कर बे जा जा करते हैं कर बे but I can say in the modern side the Swiggy and Zomato has changed substantially the ecosystem and scope of business definitely आमा आरेक टा वेंचर आजे मछली बाबा फ्राइज बोले in three years the kind of growth it has made only only uh, fries and cutlets and calcutta gravy. gravy. Uh, ota grow kore chhe, uh, uh, 50 times faster than bhajuri. 50 times. So the madam je chop cutlet ko thara bolle chhe, kuvada kharaam kisi wadi di. Eda ami madam ke bolle chhi. Bolo, na but ami to tomate ko to chop cutlet ko thara bolli di. Ala na jay bolle chhe to chop. Apni kya na bolbe? Eda to original bibe karon to bolle chhe den. शंकर ने लिखा बोलते लिखा आज है बिहार तो बोले चलें देख भी एक दिन कोलकाता है प्रत्येक टा रास्ता मोड़े चौप काटे दुकान होंगे ये ना बुक रिटन बाय शंकर मोनी शंकर मुखर्जी बिहार का ना दर्शन स्टेटेड सो ही हैड दैट विजन ये चौप काटे के कल्चर का शंकर दिखा बजे हम लोग उन देखते बच्चे जो कुन शुरू करें दिला ना मैं यार इंग्लिश है जाती ना एक बारे थैंक यू सो मच माने इसे एक टा अमादे एक टो स्पेशल एड्रेस हवार को था चिलो एक टा आड़ा सेशन मतो हुलो एंड इट आई एम शुर्स स्टूडेंट्स दर आरो बेशी भार लगे चाहिए तो शून्यता बाती ना एक ही
end of the day, this was really refreshing. Onik dhono bad. And ato shundor kore journey ta bojano onar jiboner bivinno stage ki kore shuru korlen. Eta shotti eta learning experience. Amader students the journey adge onno ra kome ekta obig gada holo. Shobai to onik he talks about entrepreneurship, but ei obig gada ta onno ra kome definitely. Amader we are at the fag end almost, and amader we have to offer the formal vote of thanks. Shita jono I would request Professor. Thriti Bhai Shnak, I don't want to say anything about it, I don't want to say anything about it. I don't want to say anything about it, but I don't want to say anything about it. I don't want to say anything about it, I don't want to say anything about it. I don't want to say anything about it. So, I'm not going to say anything about it, but I'm not going to say anything about it. A big round of applause for him, please. Professor Thriti Bhai Shnak. Sorry, sorry, extremely. I mean, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Anyways, thank you so much. So, with this, we come to the end of the program. But the program is the last one. We have to congratulate each other. It's a very good idea for students. First, I would request Ina Madam to please come on stage. Please, ma'am. And I would request director sir to please come on the stage and do the honors. Director sir, apni udhik tuasha. Madam, it it a coding year last year udha kuch. Finally, we've got you up on stage. Come on. Come forty members of IIC come. एक टू बोशो आठ आठ जस्ट पांच मिनट नो फाइव फाइव मिनट्स नॉट मोर देन दैट जस्ट फाइव मिनट्स जस्ट पांच मिनट प्लीज स्टूडेंट्स जस्ट फाइव मिनट्स थैंक यू आर आर एक आर एक जोन जाके फेलिसिटेट ना करले ये प्रोग्राम टा कंप्लीट हो बे ना ओइंद्रिला प्लीज तू ही जो तू ही छोभी टानी बेस्ट तो करा चिश्ता करो हमारे प्लीज कम ऑन स्टेज है सर अपनी
Hey, I'll double, I'll double. Hello, my dear students. You just wait for some time. It is my request. Though you are my students, but I am requesting. Chot kore jinish bhenge diyo na. Ata gola jinish ke bhanga lagye. Aar ek tu majboot kore dao. Ek tu aage ta shun le. Maya, Mr. Kadi ji ko halpo. Sudrang. आज के शेष ओवर आगे तुम अच्छा जस्ट अ क्विक वोट ऑफ थैंक्स आई लाइक टू गिव थैंक यू टू एवरी वन फॉर कमिंग यू गाइज आर ऑसम Yeah, special thank to uh, the faculty present and the whole team. I take every one of your name. Thank you, director sir, for coming and gracing us with your presence. Uh, okay, I'm part of a picture. I'm photo bombing. Yeah, but uh, the actual people uh, without whom the uh, event won't be possible. My great team. Thank you so much, each and every one of you. You were amazing. Please make some noise. They are why we made it possible. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Shreya. Thank you, uh, Sukanya. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you, Kush. Yeah, there, boy. Odd boy. Oruba. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you, Oruba. Thank you, Oruba. Thank you, Shankardeep. Thank you, Shorandeep. Thank you, Shinjan. Thank you, uh, Sagariga. Thank you, Pritam. Thank you, Shobhago. Thank you. दीपराज अनुभव आभार आभार कहना थैंक्स बोल दो अच्छा थैंक यू अश्विदा थैंक यू नयनिका थैंक यू मयूख जीत हु आर यू थैंक यू दामिनी अच्छा थैंक यू प्रांतप ऑल्सो थैंक यू रुद्र अनिल वील ऑलवेज बी टुगेदर फॉर एवर थैंक यू थैंक यू राजवीर ठीक है एंड थैंक्स टू यू गाइज ओके यू गाइज मेड events like this possible thank you so much for coming and thanks to everyone present here thank you also a big thanks to me